Yes, thank you very much. Uh, apologies for the late start. There don't seem to be any other senators in the building. Um, nevertheless, we call the uh, Committee on Economic Affairs um, public hearing today, March 9, to order. And uh, with that, today we deal with an almost post-apocalyptic scenario. Given the uh, triple threat that we face, um, to foreign investments, to trade, to employment, and certainly the uh, triple threat um, of COVID-19, the abrogation of the VFA, as well as the impending CITIRA taxes are uh, very, very serious um, challenges for all those involved in export, in uh, investment, and as well as in employment. Meron pang karagdagan na dalawang domestic threat, yung ASF na walang humpay, at yung uh, taal eruption sa ating pinakamalawak at pinakamayaman ng region, Region 4A. Maliban pa niyan, may deadline pa na binigay ang AMLA na mare-red flag pa tayo kapag uh, hindi pa natapos. At ito ay uh, nasa konteksto ng ating mga pogo scandal na wala rin tigil. So, eto nga, uh, today we have a uh, big agenda, pero sa kabila nito, ang uh, testimonya po ni uh, Secretary Dominguez nung pumunta rito nung... Uh, March 9 ata po yun, nung pinag-uusapan yung ASF, taal at yung corona, noon coronavirus, ngayon yung COVID-19, ang sabi po niya, verbatim po, e while these developments might slightly restrain our economic expansion, these threats are not enough to force a dramatic expansion, a reduction in our growth estimates. We are standing by our working projection of a GDP growth rate between 6.5 to 7.5 percent in the year 2020. Matapang po si Secretary uh, Dominguez. Pero tignan natin kung talagang ano yung realidad na hinaharap natin. I also recognize uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Maraming salamat sa pag-attend po ng hearing. At... Uh, Mukhang uh, may iba't ibang presentation. Gusto po ba ninyo mag-present muna? Uh, sige, uh, let me call on the committee secretary to recognize the guests who are here present. Good morning, Senator Marco, Senator Binay. Today's guest for our three uh, committee, uh, three Senate resolution, uh, 315, 323, and 339, uh, to head the uh, guest is Yusek Hill Beltran, ASEC Teresa Habitan, ASEC Maria Edita Tan of the DOF, uh, from the National Economic and Development Administration, Yusek Rosemary Edelion, uh, from the Presidential Commission on Visiting Forces Office of the Special Assistant to the President, we have Yusek Pedro Cesar Rambo Rambuanga Jr., Ms. Maureen Gatdula, and Mr. Lance Kalub. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Yusek Lourdes Eparagire, ASEC Maria Lumen Islita, uh, ASEC Maynardo Montealegre, Mr. Jose, Joselito Chad Jacinto, Ms. Bien Janine Balocating, and Attorney Melissa Ann Pelan, Attorney Noren Kalip. For the Department of Health, we have Dr. Alatea de Guzman. For the Department of National Defense, we have Yusek Ricardo Halad and Ms. Aini Mengilia. From the Department... And ASEC Sharae Grande. From the Department of Empl Labor and Employment, we have... Uh, Administrator Bernard Olalia. From the Department of National Defense, we have Yusek Ricardo Hala ay, mer ito, and Ms. Aimee Mengilia. From the Department of Trade, we have Assistant Director Alice Opeña. From the Board of Investment, we have Attorney Ellie Jean Portosa and Ms. Sandra Marie Recolizado. From the Semiconductor and Electronics Industries in the Philippines Foundation, we have Mr. Dan Lachica. 
from the Confederation of Wearable Exporters of the Philippines, we have Miss Maria Teresita Hoxon Agoncillo. Uh, from the Cebu Pacific Airlines, we have Attorney Manta Paterno Mantarin Jr. and Attorney Roberto Lim. From the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, we have Brigadier General Charito B. Plaza Mansa, ay, MNSA pala. Miss Maria Hayet Abordo, Mr. Elmer San Pascual, and Attorney Ross Vicente C. Vincent C. Yes. From the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, we have Attorney Ruel John T. Cabiting. From the Sambuanga City Economic Zone Authority, Economic Zone and Freeport Authority, we have Mr. Raul M. Regondola and Mr. Robert de la Victoria. From the Authority of the Freeport Area of Batauan, we have Mr. Al Yu Al Yu Jin Ong. Sorry. And from the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority, we have Mr. Raul Lambino. From the Information Technology and Business Process Management, we have Mr. Nicky Agkawili. From the, uh, we have a guest from the AMCHAM, Mr. Ro uh, John Forbes. And from the German Philippine Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Ives Aguilos. That's all, Senator. Yes, thank you very much. We welcome all those who came on uh, this Monday morning and uh, brave the traffic and so on. Maraming salamat sa pagdalo ninyo. Um, nakita naman niyo napakarain natin ngayong umaga, kaya ta, umpisan natin dito muna chronologically sa COVID-19, kung papayag po si Senator Binay. Sa COVID-19 po tayo uh, mag-umpisa. Um, may presentations daw ang NEDA, PESA at SBMA. Sa palagay ko yung PESA at SBMA, A. Mamaya na lang siguro. Unahin muna natin si COVID. At uh, siguro may update ang DOH o may sasabihin ang DOH tungkol uh, sa lumalaganap na COVID incidences mula sa BGC hanggang sa QC kaninang umaga. Uh, we invite Dr. De Guzman as well as ASEC Grande. At uh, matapos nga yung QC, may Marikina sa radyo unconfirmed. Sige po. Good morning, everyone. May I request our presentation to be shown? Iklian lang po lahat ng presentation, ah, dahil uh, uh, alam naman po ninyo, hindi kami doktor, higit sa lahat, at uh, uh, napakarain na po natin. Yes, pa. So, good morning. First of all, thank you for allowing our department to give this presentation. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the layout. You would like to give a short update on the global and local situation on COVID-2019. Next is what is the Philippine Government prepar Preparedness and Response 9 next I. And lastly, what are the next steps given the current situation? Next book. Uh, just to situate everyone, we would like to provide the following facts. One, uh, data states that this coronavirus came from animals and as such tagged as zoonotic, but we have uh, no information as of yet uh, from which animal species it originated. It is transmitted from person to person, but it is uh, transmitted. Yes, Pop. Kung mari, marami na kaming narinig ah, okay. na pa ulit ulit. So we'll At saka yung mga factoids na yan, contested, okay. kung talagang galing sa animal. Sige, so, Noted. kung maari, can we just move forward to contingency okay, plans po. and uh, um, the uh, present status? Can we go Kasi to naka, the... Ah, pa. nakailan na. Yes, Pop. So, we'll, si Senator Binay. <laughs> yes, Pop. Let's okay. go for a while. For, okay. Okay. So, let me go to the global update. Uh, yes, next, please. So these are the latest. So we see a slight increase in the CFI. There's also transmission in 101 countries, of which 551 are already reporting local transmission. And in the Philippines, next. Uh, and these are the top and these are the countries with top reported cases, namely China, South Korea, and Japan. Next. Book. So we see a, a decrease globally, but an increase in cases in countries outside of China. Next. And in the Philippines, these are our current statistics. We have 700 patients under investigation. 
only 48 are currently admitted, while 646 have been discharged. And we are reporting 10 confirmed cases. I will give a breakdown Teka, of this. Lahat are ITM, kasi yun naman ang kaisa-isang infectious uh, disease no, center. It Nasaan is, sila? Di ba? Sabog-sabog din. Uh, it is in different hospitals. Po. Pero none of these hospitals are in fact uh, specialized in infectious care. Some of these has hospitals are specialized in infectious care. What we require is that they have the capacity to isolate these patients Ayun under investigation. Yun na nga, yun na nga ang issue. Kasi wala naman silang isolation wards na sapat. Alam naman natin ang itsura ng ating provincial hospitals na talagang siksikan hanggang ali. So that is what we, that is part of our next test, man, to be able to capacitate all other level two hospitals so that they can um, accommodate uh, the increase in our patients. Um, Next po. So we also have repatriates. So there are 445 repatriates currently in New Clark City. 34 were uh, classified as patients under investigation and more than half have tested negative. The rest are awaiting uh, laboratory results. Next po. We also reported repatriates from two cruise ships in from Macau. So far, there are no patients under investigation and they are um, sent home under quarantine. Next po. Uh, this is the inventory or the profile of our 10 uh, confirmed. Doc, balik lang natin? Yes po. Ano yung ibig sabihin na disembark in Philippines March 1? Tama ba yan? Yes po. And um, March 7? Mm-hmm. Uh, these Hindi ba are, sila kasama din sa ban? Uh, no. Ah, Ma'am, ito po ay mga uh, passengers sa uh, cruise ships po na um, may history of travel outside. So what they did is when they disembarked or came back here in the Philippines, we uh, monitored or profiled them whether they should be classified as uh, patients under investigation or monitoring. So as per classification, they are only persons under monitoring po. So... Next po. So we have ten to a total of ten confirmed cases. The first three though so the upper line are actually we classified them as though they are of foreign nationalities. The first three were already previously reported. These are all imported cases from Wuhan, China. The seventh case, actually, so I'll go on. Uh, the fourth is a 38-year-old male. He is a uh, Taiwanese uh, who visited, uh, uh, we have a foreign national who visited uh, from Taiwan. And this 38-year-old male is actually his contact. Uh, they were together during a tour. Uh, he, he is currently admitted and was. Uh, we were notified that he tested positive for COVID um, yesterday. Po. Another is okay, an... Okay, uh, uh, I think we just need the summary. Po. Okay. Because uh, uh, we are all aware that the president has already declared a state yes, of emergency po. in the health sector. So yes. please proceed. Thank okay, you. Okay, so in summary, five are foreign nationals while well, the rest are Filipinos of the 10, um, five have uh, travel history outside of the Philippines, while the rest have no significant travel history outside. Next book. So um, just an inventory that uh, we have overseas Filipino worker, who overseas Filipinos who were confirmed cases, but they are all um, uh, recovered. Po. Next book. And these are the foreign nationals that we were reported to us to have been uh, positive for COVID with travel history to the Philippines. Uh, yes, yeah, yes ma'am. Okay, so if we may proceed to the Philippine government preparedness and response. Next. So we are familiar with the four-door policy. Uh, oh, so sorry ma'am. So I will... Um, uh, explain po, what is the four door? Door, door four na po tayo. Oh, sige. So, nasa door four na po tayo, meaning there is evidence of local transmission. Uh, however, ang, ang ating may kasunod pa po yan, no? ang hindi sana natin maabot is yung tinatawag po natin magkaroon ng epidemic surge. We're in the now, we're in our health system, will be overwhelmed to the point that we will not be able to effectively. So, dapat five door? 
that <laughs> para, well, we will explain po. We have code alerts po for each door and sa code red po natin, they tagged it as sub-level 1, which is we have evidence of local transmission and a sub-level 2 where in yeah, doc, is... Kasi sa, uh, I mean, the way you framed it, parang yes, four doors, di ba? And then the yes, fourth door is parang the worst case scenario. Yes, but apparently, it is not worse. the worst case scenario. Kasi sinabi mo, may isa pang... Uh, Worst case scenario. Tama po ba? Para pong they divided it into two sub-levels um, wherein, yes. Uh -oh. They tried to... They try to divide it into two sub-levels. Uh, the fact that there is local transmission is already a trigger for us that we need to step up uh, our efforts. However, um, when there is evidence of community transmission or yung epidemic surge na sinasabi po natin, uh, that means whatever initial uh, additional efforts that we are doing now needs to be further scaled to be able to respond to this epidemic surge. Okay. okay. Uh, pwede pa tayong tumuloy na sa ginagawa ng DOH kasi yes. we're primarily here to see the economic impact okay. and uh, Next. have to deal yes, with that pa. very quickly. Dahil yes, kasi pa. ang naririnig po natin, kaya Secretary Secretary Duque at sa iba pang mga kinatawan ng uh, Department of Health, iba-iba eh, at uh, hindi magkatugma. Medyo nalilito na yung taong bayan. Kung talaga bang may face mask, walang face mask, maghugas ng kamay, mag-alkohol, uh, lumabas, pinagbabawalan, hindi pinagbabawalan. Ano ba talaga, sister? Yes, pa. Madam, Madam yes. Chair, siguro just to add, um, okay. kasi, di ba parang... Uh, Senator Binay, please. Uh, Dr. Duque, parang binanggit mo na parang... Biniyak nyo pa yung fourth door, di ba? Bakit, bakit hindi na lang kumbaga tinodo na or sinagad na para yung the way we will, the way the business community will manage it. Kumbaga, nandun na tayo talaga sa worst case scenario. Kasi, um, di ba, yeah. parang today, nandun tayo sa sub-level 1 ba? Yes. And then, it, two days from now, baka nasa sub-level 2 na tayo. We're in, magbabago na naman ng... Everybody Response. will have to change on naman the strategy. Yes. So, bakit? Let us, why not prepare for the worst case scenario? May I yes, the usual strategy to prepare for the worst case and pray for the best case, hindi po ba? <laughs> Ito, hindi namin naintindihan sa Dr. Puto. Saan ba yung para sa komunidad? Para naintindihan ng pangkaraniwan tao. Ah. Good morning po, nice. uh, Dr. Gemma Arellano po sa Emergency Operational Center ng Department of Health on COVID-19. So just to, to summarize, like what the Department of Health is doing right now, we are actually, as uh, Dr. Teya said, following the four-door policy. So door four is actually meaning may local transmission. Ang trigger po ng door four is just one case, and we had that actually two cases. So, kaya in-open po, na sinabi ni Secretary Duque na code red na tayo kasi we actually confirmed two local cases. Okay, Bakit, kapag code red, ano nang gagawin ngayon? So, yun po. Uh, wala kasi akong slide. So, so yung door four po kasi... Um, Kaya tayo sasabi ni Senator B9 na bakit mag-change pa. Kasi trigger lang po yun. Pero actually the actions are whether we have cluster of cases or madaming grupo-grupo ng positive sa so local. So is there an absolute number that needs to be reached before it's a complete pandemic, epidemic, etc.? Um, wala po. Kasi kailangan lang merong ma-identify na confirmed na cluster of cases like iba-ibang lugar na nagkakaroon. Tapos pag if ever it's a Worst case scenario, sinabi ni Dr. Thea, it's actually a different plan. This is where ano following the plan 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 plan? sa worst case? Nandito na tayo sa worst case. Uh, kahit wala pa tayo sa pinakagrabe na sitwasyon, gusto lang namin malaman kung ano yung kahandaan ng DOH uh, para sagipin itong sakit yes, na ito. Po. If, so, yes, ma po. Madam Chair, siguro yes, just po. to add, kasi di ba si Secretary Duque na rin naman yung nagsasabi na it's just a question of yeah. um, time. Yes, um, yung clustering na binabanggit nyo, it's bound to happen. I think we just have to accept that reality yes, yes. and prepare for that reality. Yes, na I think kaya nagkakaroon ng fear on the ground kasi hindi na feel yung preparedness or kulang sa dissemination of information. I don't know, siguro yung mga negosyante dito, baka sila rin hindi nila alam kung ano bang gagawin natin pag code red na or yes. ano ba yung ini-expect natin pag code red na. Baka may mga ganong pagkukulang on the ground. Yes, yes ma'am. 
Can I just quickly po go through what we have been doing po? So first, there's okay, okay na yan yes kasi po. hindi naman kami yes. doktor. Okay. Ano ba da dapat gawin okay, ng taong bayan? Let's go po to the next steps po. Uh -oh. Next steps. Okay, so as mentioned po ni Dr. Rajema, there's actually two sub-levels. Ngayon gusto ko lang pong i-clarify, bakit po there's a difference between the sub-level 1 and the sub-level 2? When we say local transmission, ako po, halimbawa, ako ay may sakit, pero ang na-infect ko lang po ay ang household contacts ko or a very small area. That is local transmission. Pero kapag lumalabas na po sa household ko and I'm already infecting the rest of the community, that is community transmission and that is harder to contain and that will lead po tayo sa sub-level 2 which is the epidemic surge po. So we have in place a contingency plan para po answeren itong sub-levels 1 and 2 na code red po natin in response to the presence of local transmission and if ever we reach the level that there is community transmission or epidemic surge. We already have an interagency task force but that needs to be further expanded to other agencies that we need to engage para nga po ma-further contain if there is already community transmission. And you are correct, one of the most important um, uh, intervention is really to raise awareness about this disease so that we can uh, 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 level down the sense of panic and fear and anxiety si in the community. Dr. Dikusman, just to share uh, yes, over the weekend, di ba? Kailan ba kayo nag-announce na may 4th and 5th? No, I think was it a Saturday? Oh, yes, po. Ano ba Monday. So yesterday, sa social media or sa mga Viber groups, Nagkalat na yung umiikot na merong isang skwelahan sa BGC na parang confirmed yung isang parent. So they had to parang uh, disinfect the school. Tapos parang ako the whole time sinasabi ko, ah, baka fake news yan kasi wala pa ako naririnig from DOH na may ganong huh, case. case. But pagdating ng gabi, I think you announced it 10 or 11 o'clock, there's four additional confirmed patients na hindi naman kayo nagbigay ng detalye. So hindi alam ngayon kung saan ba galing tong apat na to at kasama ba dun sa apat na yon yung kumakalit na sa social media sa Viber groups itong isang case nga na na parent na apparently confirmed daw but sabi ko wala hindi yan totoo siguro kasi I mean, DOH is not announcing yes, parang nangyayari kasi yeah. nauuna yung mga Viber groups okay. kesa dun sa announcement ng DOH and then Ang masama pa, parang yung isang company na nag-announce, parang nagagalit pa kayo dun sa kumpanya na yun just because they're informing the public, di ba? So, para kaya, I think you you also have to, ewan ko, bilisan nyo yung pag-announce, pag pag-disseminate na information. Kasi nga, parang nawawalan ng ano eh, kumpiyansa yung, yung public with the way you're handling the dissemination of the patients. Please. I understand the Senator. Uh, actually, from the emergency... Yeah, kaya diskumpiyado lahat eh. Yes At po. kaya nagkakaroon ng panic kasi pa iba-iba na, nahuhuli pa. Yes po. Uh, just to, to go back to what Senator Binay said, the information was actually... Uh, DOH was requested to withheld the source of the cases. So, and then, that's why... Y hindi yun na eh. Ano po, naiintindahan ko yung problema ng yes. DOH, yung, yung balancing act between the privacy of the patient yes. and the... And then the uh, and of the public. But you know, at the end of the day, your government officials dapat laging mas mananaig kung ano yung mas makakabuti sa nakakarami. Eh, katulad yes. nga, ito, parang ang dating kayo na lang ata yung hindi nakakalam, pero halos lahat dun sa community na yon alam na nila, alam na nung mga co-parents na confirmed na uh, may coronavirus pala yung co-parent nila, but it, there was no word from DOH. Yes. So it's a, it was actually the next day that the, the secretary already announced. Anyway, the issue of that uh, case was actually dealt with and it was discussed thoroughly what happened. And maybe may I 
just proceed like after that incident uh, what we have been doing so it was we uh, actually uh, sent out five in five uh, investigation teams in order to do the contact tracing that's one and number two we try to identify other confirmed cases and get them out of the community and admit them in the hospital because the first thing that you have to do is to isolate these cases even we don't the symptomatic so even though we didn't know who else is positive we actually uh, uh, admit uh, get, got them out of the community. And third po, yung intensive communication campaign, actually that's why the Secretary has been doing a lot of press briefing every day, even twice. But then, it, every day there's new things coming up and we're trying to keep up with all this new information that we get, uh, like for the case, the you said four cases. Actually, the specimen was taken in the morning and the result came out in the afternoon, something like that. It was really too fast. Like, uh, every day we try to give out all the information. Yes. Okay, thank you to the DOH representatives. Basically, what we are requesting is that DOH please present updated guidelines. Yes. Kahit hindi naman kayo uh, nasa radyo at 24 oras, yes. ang hinihingi lang po namin, yung guidelines, kung anong gagawin. Okay. Which has a direct impact now on what we have to talk about. Uh, I'm not certain if NEDA... Um, ha you, have a you have a presentation. Has this got to do with COVID-19? Yes. The reason is that, of course, we already know that uh, many uh, economic uh, analysts have already cut the growth rate of the Philippines from 7.5, 6.5 to below 6 percent. Global Source in New York has said that uh, COVID-19 is the black swan of 2020, and sabi nila nasa 5.9 o mas mababa pa ang magiging growth ng Pilipinas. Um, Maraming impact ito. Alam natin, domestic demand. Unang-una yung tourism, na pati si Secretary Dominguez binanggit na nasa 2% lang naman ng GDP. Konti lang daw yun. Tapos yung business travel, pero napakarami po. Hindi uh, sa mawalang galang na lamang, pero talaga naman napakaraming impact nito. Trade and production linkages that uh, our PESA and other IPAs are too well aware. Supply disruptions and of course the health defects that we have just spoken about. So uh, would you, Sec Edilion, like to present the uh, NEDA outlook? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this one is actually uh, also what we will be presenting tomorrow before the economic development cluster. Uh, ano, yung, ano, ano yung impact? Uh, next, please. No, you, you, Sec, no. bago to, no? hindi ito yung present ni Secretary Dominguez hindi. during the health in the end, um, that was a very sanguine report saying that it would be limited <laughs> to the tourism sector and the impact would only be 2% on GDP. Pero mukhang lumalala ang sitwasyon at pati yung mga analysts sa abroad sinasabi bagsak talaga yung growth this year. At tayo damang-dama na natin yan sa tourism at sa iba't iba pang lugar. So Yusek Edilion, please. Yes, yes. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> totoo na to. <laughs> no, actually, uh, yung, yung sinasabi nga ni, ano, ni, ni Sex Sunny uh, is yung Chinese tourists kasi, they account for 22% of, uh, of tourist arrivals. Tapos kapag sinama na namin ultimo yung uh, some, uh, some reduction, uh, let's say coming from Korea kasi may partial lockdown tayo, and then coming from the uh, administrative regions, and also from uh, uh, other destinations, uh, other sources, uh, in ano lang namin ang mga 10%. If, for instance, this goes on until June, uh, then we're looking at uh, um, reduction in tourist arrivals of 1.42 million, and then uh, yung foregone uh, GVA is uh, that much, 93 to 187 uh, billion. So, next, please. In terms of uh, jobs, we're looking at uh, potential losses of uh, between 30 to 50,000 jobs. Hindi ah, ang sinasabi ng ADB, ang liwa-liwa, nag 252,000 jobs lost. 
Kasi linilimit ninyo sa travel and tourism eh. May impact to, pati sa pabrika, pati sa ating mga economic zones. So, ang sabi ngayon na talagang aabot daw to ng 252,000, 1.9 billion US dollars sa GDP. Mabigat-bigat ang sinasabi ng ADB. Kasi pati yung OFW natin, di makaalis eh, di ba? Parang linilimit lang naman ninyo sa tourism. Na Hindi actually, maganda magplano sa magandang senaryo. Mas maganda magplano sa pinaka-worst case. Actually, yung estimate nila na 1.93 billion dollars is even lower than our estimate. Pero like, yung yeah, jobs um, ninyo, bakit napakataas? Parang ang konti-konti namang wala, mawawala. Ang estimate kasi namin with respect to, uh, so ano to, hanggang June lang to. So uh, we do have some scenarios going until uh, December. Pero with respect to manufacturing, uh, ang lumabas kasi na PMI natin for, for February is still like Bakit manufacturing lang? Eh, paano yung mga tourism, okay, mga yan. OF? Lahat yun, in, 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 uh, except the OFs, di pa namin tinitingnan yun sa OFs. Kasi we're still looking at uh, what will be the response outside. Uh, so this one is really tourism yes, Senator Binay, and, please. Then, um, and then manufacturing. Yes, ma'am. We yeah, also recognize uh, Senator Bongo, who has just arrived. Thank I you. I guess, meron ho ba kayong presentation that will cover everything and not just travel and tourism? Because apparently with uh, the new scenario, hindi na travel and tourism, katulad nga na, ng nabanggit ni, uh, ni Chair yung sa manufacturing, kasi nga, di ba, nagkaroon ng disruption dun sa supply chain. And ngayon, yung OFWs natin, I think dalawang country na yung nag-a-announce na hindi na nila papayagan yung mga OFW natin na, na makabalik. So, meron ho ba kayong ganong... Meron pa, a uh -huh. Uh, with respect to uh, exports and imports, oh, you have it here? Yeah. You have it now? Uh, it's not in the slide because it's lump lump na sila dyan sa slide. But we do have a report which we can, uh, which we can share. You know, mas detalyado. Sige, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, baka they can just submit to the committee. Yes, we will. Uh, like yes, I said, said, no, we're deeply concerned because if you're going to be presenting this to the president as well as the economic cluster of the cabinet, it should be accurate. And to my mind, the estimates on the job losses are very, very uh, conservative and inadequate. Yeah, noted, ma'am. Uh, with respect to impact on uh, um, ayan, GDP growth uh, is uh, between 0.5 to 1%. So, kung ang scenario natin dati is, uh, ang target natin is 6.5 to 7.5 percent, then we are looking at 5.5 uh, to 6.5 percent for, for the Planning year. Planning 6.5? 5.5 to 6.5. 5.9, <laughs> sabihin na lang natin. Nasa gitna, sige na yan. Huwag na tayo magtawaran sa nung nagroon. Masakit sa bulsa yan. O oh, sige, ano naman yeah. yung GDP? Uh, actually, ang mas... Ano ako, kasi sabi mo, mas malaki yung estimated losses ninyo sa GDP, which doesn't tally with the job loss. Nahihilo po ako. Sabi okay. niyo yung 1.93 uh -oh. billion US dollars na loss to GDP mm -mm, mm -mm, na sinasabi mm -mm. ng ADB, kulang yeah. pa yun. Tama po ba? This one kasi is uh, based on uh, tinira namin kasi yung latest na ano, na data and some uh, meron kami naging meeting with the PP PCCI last week and they say that actually they still have inventory that's good for two months so okay pa yon so ang problema lang natin is if it will linger if uh, if China will not be able to recover beyond the beyond the two months. Yun ang, ano, yun ang magiging, ano, magiging problema. But with respect to tourism, with respect to tourism, no one ano seems to think they will. Uh, mm -hmm. Yusek Edilion, yes, our concern is really that we provide the president as well as the cabinet with adequate numbers so that the uh, emergency stimulus package is also responsive to the um, magnitude of this threat. So, sana, ilagay na natin lahat. Huwag natin minamasahe yung mga numero. Akala ko mga politiko lang nagpapapogi. In fact, what we also want to flag is that uh, ang ating uh, expected na budget deficit is uh, between 3.3% to 3.4% of GDP already. Uh, huh? Ano po yun in real numbers po? Mga times sa uh, mga 18 trillion. Kano ba ito? <laughs> ang gusto lang din namin sabihin is it will breach our target. 
of uh, yes, 3. Yes, but how much? Because the, uh, as we know, we're not asking for a, uh, mm -hmm. an, a real estimate, but more or less a guesstimate. Palibasa, lumalawak na to. Kung 18 trillion yung GDP, yun ang sinasabi po ninyo. So, mga 680 billion. How much pa? Mga 680 billion. Uh, ang ating target is... Uh, <laughs> and ang ating target lang dito is uh, 3.2 kasi, 3.2% of GDP. Eh, ba't ninyo liniliitan nandyan sa slide ninyo, 3.3 at 3.4? Huwag na tayo magtawaran, hindi naman mm. tubilas ang isda. <laughs> may, may laging ano, range. <laughs> eh, yung range ninyo mas mataas, ba't yung kinocompute ninyo mas mababa? Ano ba yan? Ah, okay. Y you want the... Uh, 3.4. Pero basa ko lang yung presentation yeah, yeah. ninyo. 3.4, 3.4. So yun yung 680 actually. Mga okay, 680 so 680 billion. billion. Okay. That's um, the deficit. Mm -hmm. Okay, having um, having described and attempted to quantify these dire consequences, ano po ang plano kaya o ire-recommend ninyo sa economic cluster kasama ng NEDA, narito yung finance at uh, yung iba't iba pang kinatawa ng ating uh, pamahalaan na may kinalaman sa uh, revenue. Ano po ang magagawa natin? Um, I think the uh, bill filed, the resolution filed by Senator Gatchalian, um, refers to an economic stimulus package for this emergency. Ano po ang gagawin natin ito? Uh, siguro hindi na to. Uh, we're looking at, uh, we're recommending actually three phases uh, of response here. So first response is obviously safety first. Sige, ituloy-tuloy lang po. Ituloy-tuloy lang po yan. <laughs> Perhaps I can call on uh, the ACAP as well as the airlines. Kayo uh, yung frontliner. Sino pa yung, rep yung representatives ng tourism sector? Ay, uh, Paki back please. Ano yung economic proposals ninyo? Kasi... Committee uh, on Health yun, kay Chairman Bongo yun, hindi mm -hmm. sa akin. Yung economic proposals. Sige, next please. Huwag na yan, kasi alam na natin yan. Next. Alam natin, pero hindi natin ginagawa. Ayos lang. <laughs> yeah. Ito yung, ano, yung uh, okay, Yung economic proposals, please. Sige, next. Uh, ito right. yung uh, ano namin. Ito, relax. Ano yun? Yung, uh, ito yung sinasabi namin na regulatory forbearance. Okay. Uh, well, yung mga non-monetary uh, ano non na ano, response is uh, encourage telecommuting, uh, allow reduction of work hours, work days, rotation of workers, and forced leave. So this is just uh, by a dole may circular. Expand rules on minimum wage exemptions to include epidemics. Uh, provide relief for banks and quasi-banks. Uh, this one is already covered by a BSP circular. Nauna na silang nagawa nito. Uh, where they are allowing staggered booking of allowance for credit losses um, and uh, imposition of penalties on legal reserve deficiencies. Uh, the DOT is requesting... None of these require any action from the legislature. Lahat ito pwedeng admin? Pwedeng admin. Uh, Merong okay. iba na ano, that will require. Ay, yung pera lang. Waving <laughs> <Okay. laughs> of uh, participation fees for international trade uh, and travel fairs. Uh, this is requested by the DOT. And Pero then, kaya ito, naman ng DOT gawin yan, sarili nila. Hindi naman kailangan mm, na pag-uwi yung batas katulad yeah. uh, and, oh, by the way, may ang DOH uh, is requesting the 2 billion peso supplementary budget. Yan, so, uh, yan ang, uh, Wala pa napapasang siguro. supplementary budget mula ng umupo si mula Presidente. Baba. Parang tagilid yata yan. Tignan uh -huh. natin. Yes. Sige po. This one, we are uh, uh, requesting that we allow exporters to sell to the domestic market. So, according to the FIA kasi, if they're in the zones, uh, si uh, Chair Plaza is here, uh, they should actually be exporting 70%. But uh, we're saying that uh, if it's a strategic commodity, that's one, uh, baka dapat dito Meron na sila mag-sell. Meron ba ng strategic commodity, please? Uh, the masks, for instance. Yung mga, yung mga masks medical sa supplies. Medics. Yeah, uh oo. -oh, uh -oh. Ng Taiwanese company, right? Yes, uh oo. -oh. And then... Uh, actually... You sex sa ibang countries nga, parang binabana nila yung pag-export of uh, yes. medical, ano ba yan, mga masks, yes, mga yes, ganun. Yes. We also materials. need to identify even yung mga food siguro, mga, mga medicines, mga ano. 
yung mga to, uh, baka dapat uh, <laughs> i ano na sila. Well, number one, uh, should Neda so be doing that? What or? should we be, what are you recommending vis-a-vis -vis the strategic resources and products? Uh, well, yung, yung, yung muna na ano, allow them to sell to the domestic market. Uh, kasi by law, they cannot. Uh, so, I don't know if uh, just a void resolution Maari would suffice. Maaari bang gawin yung sinasabi ni Senator Binay din, na huwag na muna i-export. Pwede yeah. na. Uh, Since an export kapos man. naman tayo sa supply, huwag yeah, naman yeah. na uh -oh. i-export muna. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Pero baka kailangan nga ng, ano, ng uh, some legislation or something. Kasi uh, ma-penalize sila kasi if, uh, if they... Uh, 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 Hindi mo lang ano, mark, mark. EO lang. Kasi, yun ang, ano, I mean, just to be realistic, last yes, day yes, na mo yes, namin sa Wednesday. Matagal, correct ka dyan. Uh -oh, so, pagbalik yeah. namin May na, baka... Hindi na ho natin alam kung ano it nangyari. I-check namin kung it can be done by EO. We only have kasi session days Kasi kung recess ang actually. Congress, kung recess ang Congress, then it gives some powers to the President. Okay, yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Ano pang, uh, maliban sa safety first, ano mm -hmm. pang uh, labor market interventions, yung mga ah, for, mm -mm. OFW natin, andito yung dole. Yeah. And siguro, Madam Chair, pwede padagdag na din, ano yung assistance sa binibigay ho natin sa mga small and medium enterprises? Me me merong, uh, next please. Uh, ba, uh, ito yung mga, ano, um, Oh, by the way, for the, uh, for the, sabi namin, prepare for the rebound. Nandiyan ba yan? Uh -uh, yung ano, uh, health infrastructure. Uh -uh. We're saying that we can take advantage of the lull uh, to invest in infrastructure, specifically health infrastructure, mga quarantine facilities, sana mga nasa isla. <laughs> can we allow, uh, at this point, the uh, statement um, of Senator Bongo? to be made as the uh, Committee Chairman of Health. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. The Department of uh, Health uh, confirmed last Saturday the country's first case of local transmission of COVID-19. Alert level is now raised to code red sub-level 1. Meron na tayong sampung uh, confirmed cases. Uh, in view of this development, as uh, chairperson of the Senate Committee on Health, I immediately recommended to President Duterte the declaration of a state of public health emergency to be able to further intensify our proactive measures against the spread of the virus in the country. But one step ahead po tayo. Uh, the President already signed the proclamation and later today he will meet with the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases including other government agencies and experts to discuss government response. As committee chair of health, I am also invited to assess the situation. All hands on deck po ang lahat ng agencies sa sitwasyon ngayon. The declaration will allow for the utilization of local disaster funds, procurement of needed equipment, mandatory reporting, propositioning of necessary logistics, mandatory quarantine, and travel restrictions, among others. The declaration also serves as basis for a possible price freeze under Republic Act 7581 or the Price Act. This will also expand the membership of the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases to include other instrumentalities of the government. We need a whole of society and proactive approach in preventing the further spread of the virus in the country. All government agencies and LGUs must render full assistance and cooperation as well as mobilize the necessary resources to undertake critical, urgent, and appropriate response measures in a timely manner to curtail and eliminate the COVID-19 threat. Madam Chair, allow me to take this opportunity to commend our frontliners and health workers, lalong-lalo na po yung nag-aasikaso sa ating mga repatriates mula sa ibang bansa. Sila po ay nagbubuis ng kanilang buhay para masiguro na hindi kumalat dito sa ating bansa ang virus. Salamat po sa inyo. I just want to ask the Department of Health later on updates, uh, nabigay na po yung updates on confirmed cases. Yung mga contract, uh, contact tracing natin, at yung availability of uh, 
testing uh, kits dahil minsan sa probinsya ang tagal pinapadala about uh, ilang ora ilang araw pa makakabalik ang problema doon marami na pong maaring uh, mahawa dahil uh, sa tagal ng uh, resulta lalong lalo na po doon sa Mindanao at sa Visayas dapat nakakalat po yung ating mga testing uh, kits at yung pinakamabilis na paraan na makonfirma kaagad natin kung positive po ba. Eh, Magkukos po ng panic yun kung matatagalan po yung uh, resulta. Kindly uh, check on that. At I'm sure pag-uusapan po yun mamaya. As we face this global threat, it is also necessary to know and assess the impact of COVID-19 on our economy, tourism, and transport industries. According to the Asian Development Bank, in a worst-case scenario, the Philippines may lose 1.9 billion U.S. dollars due to declines in domestic demand, lower tourism and business travel. Kaling lang po ako sa Aklan. Ang dami pong nawalan ng uh, trabaho doon. Uh, yung flights, uh, one-fourth na lang po ang lumilipad from 240 daily flights, naging 60 na lang po yata. Ang daming nagsaradong mga establishments po doon sa Boracay. Uh, in fact, plano pong bumisita ng ating Pangulo ngayong Webes para tingnan at to encourage local uh, tourists na tangkilikin po ang ating sariling mga tourist uh, destination. Um, trade and production linkages, supply disruptions, and health effects I urge our economic managers to immediately implement necessary measures to, to soften the impact of the COVID-19 on our economy. In 2019, more than half of our exports to China were shipments of el electronic parts. The current situation might, might cause a decline in our exports, particularly in electronics. I call on the Department of Trade and Industry to work closely with the affected industries and provide assistance to them to ensure that their operations and businesses would not take a serious blow. I also ask the Department of Labor and Employment to provide assistance to workers who may be displaced from their jobs due to the neg negative impact of COVID-19 to our businesses. I also ask the Department of for their thoughts on the recommendations to allow workers to work from home, especially when there have been confirmed COVID-19 cases in their companies. Finally, let me also take this opportunity to, to emphasize that defeating COVID-19 cannot be achieved by the government alone. I therefore call upon our fellow Filipinos to help the government Preventing further spread of the virus begins in us, in ourselves. We can do this by washing our hands frequently, observing proper cough etiquette, keeping ourselves healthy with plenty of sleep, refraining from spreading and believing in fake news among others. Uh, makikinig, makinig po tayo lahat sa mga alintutunin. Alintuntunin. Alin tun tunin. Sorry, bisaya ako eh. Makinig po tayo lahat sa, ng mga alin tun tunin at tamang impormasyon na galing lamang sa ating mga otoridad. Iwasan din po natin ang magpanik. Wala pong may dudulot na mabuti ito at mas lalong pinapalala lang nito ang sitwasyon. Uh, Madam Chair, I just received information that there will be a hearing in Congress tomorrow regarding the supplemental budget to address the COVID crisis amounting to two billion. I will also file a counterpart bill if necessary, uh, because we cannot afford to waste time. Buhay ng Pilipino ang nakataya dito. Kung wala hindi man po masertify ng Department of Finance yung availability of funds. Marami naman pong gustong tumulong. Nakausap ko na po si Pagko uh, Chairman uh, Chairperson Andrea Domingo. She's willing yung Pagko na tumulong kagad, lalong-lalo na po sa pag-release uh, uh, pag ng uh, funds para dito sa COVID-19. Uh, uh, gustuhin ko man pong bilang committee chair ng Senado dito sa Health, 
Gusto rin ko mang po magpatawag ng hearing araw-araw. Ayaw ko lang distorbohin ng mga cabinet secretaries para magawa nila ang trabaho nila na mas kailangan ng taong bayan ang servisyo nila sa ngayon. Uh, maraming, marami ng sakuna at kalamidad ang sumubok sa katatagan ng ating, natin mga Pilipino ngunit nalagpasan natin ang lahat ng ito dahil nagtutulungan tayo at nagtitiwala tayo sa isa't isa. Kaya pairali natin ngayon ang tunay na pagkakaisa at bayanihan. Uh, maraming salamat po uh, Madam Chair at sa lahat ng resource persons. Okay, maraming salamat pero alam naman ninyo medyo nadidismay akong minsan tayo rito sa Senado pagkat ang DOH nung binigyan naman ng budget eh kung saan saan naman na ginamit at hindi naman napunta sa mga testing kit, yun pala iilan lang, kakarampot lang 4,000 pa lang yata kaya ta, eto nga uh, yung 2 billion, kinakabahan rin kami sana na naman mapupunta yan Siga, Madam Chair, since sa banggit na naman ni Senator Bongo how many testing kits do we have? To that to, we have here Dr. Ditanko she's from the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine Good morning po. Uh, as of as I sp we speak today, our stock on hand is good for 2,000 tests. Aray ko, nangalahati pa. <laughs> and um, nag-procure na ba tayo? May padating ba? At kung may padating, ilan yung padating? We have already, we are actually requesting, according to our idea, 43 million po for additional 43 million? Yes po. Pero ang on hand, 2,000? Yes po. 43 million pesos. Pesos po. So, ilang mabibili ron? Yung pong 43 million na nire-request ng RITM for Uh, various needs po, including na po yung PCDs. Hindi, yun na nga ang problema, kasi lagi kayo nagpo-procure ng various needs, pero yung frontline na testing kit, wala pala. Meron ano po yung pinanggagamitan ng mga budget na yan? Apo. Meron Dito pong pinocure ngayon ng uh, DOH. Hindi ko lamang po alam yung data kung o sige, ilan po yun sa central lang, office please, po. At dun sa 2 billion na hinihingi ninyong supplemental budget, sana mapunta naman sa taong bayan yan, kasi kung saan-saan ang mga expired medicine na nabubulok sa bodega ang may nababalitaan. Maraming salamat po. At uh, sana, sasabihin ko rin, palibasan na rito si, uh, si uh, Senator Bong, na kung maaari, wag lang yung DOH kasi marami pang department ang naka-frontline sa problemang ito. Okay, Senator Binay po. Ma Madam Chair, pwede malama lang yung 43 million is not devoted to testing kits, di ba? Hindi, hindi po. So, ilang testing kits lang yung pwede nating ma-procure out of that 43 million? Because I know I am really concerned because I am a parent of four kids, at na pakahalaga na nag-uumpis sa testing kit eh. Kung hindi tayo magtetest, hindi natin malalaman kung ganon kalalay ang problema natin. Na parang yun di ba the whole time sabi nyo ina announce na we're okay. Konti lang yon. Apparently we're okay because we only have two thousand testing kits. So, ilan ang padating? Yes, ma'am. From here, yung una po natin kasing testing kit was from WHO and Japan po. There's an incoming 4,500 extraction kits po from WHO. So, that will be good for 2,000 individuals. And do you think that's enough? That is the reason po that we are requesting po because I think the... The reason why RITM needs to, uh, has yet to provide us a number is there is a need for DOH to review its decision tools. Ha? Uh, and, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, review pa kayo and decision kayo. tools? Para po nang What I mean is, at ibibase nga po dun sa bago nating, sorry po, ibibase po sa bago nating decision tool yung pangangailangan po. The previous decision tool only says those coming from areas with, with affected, yung mga countries po. But this time, this is already... Local transmission. So, yun nga eh. Yun nga po. I don't want to panic. But yes. you're making me panic. <laughs> Kasi yung, yung naririnig na namin ngayon is parang hindi niya pinaghandaan na magkakaroon tayo ng local transmission. Na mismong si Secretary Duque na yung nagsasabi na it's just a question of when na padating to. And then maririnig namin sa inyo na we only have te 2,000 testing kits 
out of a 100 million population. Di ba para hindi ba nakaka nakakatakot? Ma yes, ma'am. Bakit na pa priority <laughs> ng kung anik-anik na gagastos hindi, hindi sa po. 43 million? Uh, Tapos hindi pa ng 2 billion. Right. In the meantime, ang sangkatauhan na hindi matetest Apa. kung may sakit o hindi. Apologies Tama, po, I don't have the breakdown of hindi, the 43 ganito, ganito. million request. Sa ibang pagkakataon, bonggang-bonggang kung aawayin ng DOH. <laughs> sa ngayon, andito muna tayo sa NEDA at nag-iintay po yung ibang sektor. Okay. So, let's proceed. Yusek Edilion, let's wrap up. Let's hear the other Madam sectors. Madam Chancellor, bago tayo mag move on, can you just submit to the committee, magkano ba tong testing kit? Ano yung ideal number na kailangan natin? Kung kailangan pondohan, kung kailangan namin mag-extend ng session, I think all of us will be more than willing to do that. But please tell us what you need. Lalong-lalo na pagdating dito sa testing kit. Thank yes, you, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat. Yusek Edilion, please. Um, yeah, thank yes, you, we Madam await Chair. the submissions of DOH and its representatives. Yusek Edilion, sabi po ninyo yung first response is safety first and you will put that in place through admin measures, including a $2 billion supplemental budget, let's keep our fingers crossed, that will somehow get released and more importantly spent properly for frontline activities such as testing kit. Secondly, you um, also presented recover, rebuild confidence. Ano po yon? Uh, before that, just just to uh, also uh, inform the the other sectors here, there are financing programs coming from our GFIs. So there's the uh, Land Bank, TBP. Ah, yeah. This is, these are actually existing. Uh, no, these are these cabinet. are. Ayde, pero nakausap na namin sila. Yeah, so so okay. <laughs> yeah. And then there's uh, the SSS. Uh merong mga unemployment benefits then. Next please. Uh and then next we have the Dole. Uh I'm sure si uh uh Asek uh Sec Joji Yusek. Will, Yusek Joji. Yes, yeah. we'd like to, uh, to recognize Chair. Yusek Aragon's arrival. But I'm sure before kasi nabanggit ni Yusek yung SSS. Pero ang programa niya is only for the employees, de ba? Meron ho ba kayong parang sinasuggest for the employers na kumbaga parang may moratorium muna tayo kung hindi nila kayang magbayad for the meantime? Lalong-lalo na dun sa industriya ng turismo. May ganun ho ba kayong ginagawa meron, programa? Meron, meron, meron. Yung sinasabi nga namin na regulatory for forbearance na baka pwedeng term payments, <laughs> mga ganyan tipo, na i-allow sila noon. So that, that's part of our, ano, of our uh, proposal as well. So, siguro dun na sa, uh, uh, yung sinasabi rin namin, build up uh, inventory of strategic commodities. Yung rebuild the uh, confidence, ito na yung promoting uh, domestic tourism. So, DOT will actually ramp up its, uh, its programs. And then, for government to lead in MICE activities na pwede namin i-move to third quarter siguro lahat. Retooling uh, trainings yung sa uh, DOLE again. Uh -uh. Meron namang budget, uh, existing budget ito, so for, for this one. And then the Build Back Better, uh, which is uh, strategic investments in the medical field. All right, siguro hihingi kami rito ng kopya, kahit hindi pa ito official, na-present na rin at nasa transcript mm -hmm. na po natin. Mm -hmm. uh, siguro kinakailangan na bigyan tayo ng kopya. Ito, marami pa ba itong uh, slide? Ade, okay na yan. <laughs> okay na yan. Sapat na yan. Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, so we would request from the NEDA a copy of this. And also, upon further discussion and debate in the economic cluster as well as tomorrow in the cabinet uh, cluster, may we please be updated uh, as a chamber so that we are uh, knowledgeable about the steps undertaken by government. Sige po, maraming salamat. So, narito, uh, paulit-ulit natin binabanggit na ang front line ay tourism and travel. Alam ko na may kinatawan ang Cebu Pacific at uh, Philippine Airlines, uh, ACAP. So, I would like to uh, call on Attorney Roberto Lim who has uh, called for a, an exemption or a suspension of the collection of travel and other taxes. Also, Attorney Paterno Mantaring Jr. Attorney Lim, please. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, uh, thereafter, I think I shall be calling upon, uh, please be ready, with uh, your statement and the position of your sector sa OFW. At pagkatapos nun, yung manufacturing, malamang si Dan sa SAP, pati na rin si na, uh, si na Conweb ng uh, electronics, auto and communication, supply chains, uh, pati na rin si uh, Manang Ching Plaza. 
Okay? So, yan ang order po. At uh, now we hear Attorney Lim. Yes. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, with your permission, we would like to go over quickly this presentation, if I may. Uh, this is the outline of our presentation, and we will go directly to the other parts as the situation has been covered by the other government agencies. Next, please. Next. So certainly, we have taken intense and additional safety protocols to make sure that the aircraft is disinfected and is clean. Uh, so in terms of economic affairs, additional cost din yun? Yes. In terms At saka delay? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, these are just the protocols. We will run over this quickly in terms of the protocols that have been added to airline operations. Is it like, true that you are suffering even in domestic tourism? Because I've been on several flights that were more or less empty. Yes, Your Honor, because the, if I may put it in general terms, there is a 12 to 20 percent reduction in uh, capacity. Is that overall or domestic lang? Overall. Overall, Your yung Honor. Yung sa domestic, na-disaggregate na ninyo yung data at saka yung uh, actual amount of losses. Kasi... <laughs> Ang sinasabi natin, ang solusyon sa foreign travel na yes. declining, eh domestic. Samantalang ang katotohanan, yung domestic mismo, eh nababawasan din eh. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, there is, right now, we don't have, we have not disaggregated it. But uh, in terms of total numbers, we can say that uh, we have temporarily suspended 32 routes. That involves the cancellation of 8,304 flights. 32 domestic routes. Uh, combination again. Combination. Yes. Siguro, uh, it will be helpful um, uh, to provide the disaggregated data ng domestic at international. Kasi parang uh, sinasabihan tayo na yung domestic ang sagot. Eh, yun pala, problema rin. Yes, Your Honor, because in the early part, the strategy of the executive department was to encourage domestic tourism. And the airline industry has responded to that by adding flights to domestic destinations or opening new flights. I mean, Air Asia, Philippine Airlines, they have opened new routes, no? One to Pagadian, one to Sambuanga. These are just some examples, no? And the theory there is that... Uh, being an island, we are less exposed to the infections of this coronavirus. Second, it is also in response to the devastation brought by the decline in foreign tourists. Uh, the numbers are very great. If you ask the travel and tourism, they've said travel agencies have closed. Insofar as airlines are, are, are concerned, we, we are suffering. In terms of refunds, we've already indicated that from February to March, it would cost about 3 billion pesos. How much? And 3 billion. billion pesos in terms of refunds. And given the uncertainty uh, of the duration of this contagion uh, and the fear that it instills in the traveling public, as we can see from the cancellation by government conferences, private sector conferences, the, the losses keep on mounting. So what we have done, uh, we have estimated that about 1.4 million passengers are affected. No? So uh, our strategy, of course, is to stimulate demand, to engage people to travel, because we believe that overall in the Philippines it is still safe. And if one would consider the WHO guidelines, uh, travel continues to be relatively safe. Second, we have also explained that being in an aircraft is relatively safe, given the HEPA filters that are present in the aircraft. So the HEPA filters are able to screen the coronavirus. Uh, and we've said that air that is in the... Paano, paano yung uh, sitwasyon na sinasabi na napakarami pa rin, private chartered flights diretso sa Cebu, diretso sa uh, Katiklan at Kalibo? Natuloy-tuloy pa rin uh, uh, galing China. Kasi we, we understand there's been a ban already. They've been banned, pero tuloy-tuloy sila at least until the third week of February. Kasi nakamanifest doon sa mga airport. May, may alam ba kayo doon? 
We're, we're not aware of that. Uh, Kasi hindi rin report na naglalad sila, pero ang liwa-liwanag ng flight path doon sa China Airport uh, uh, terminals and yes. uh, uh, online. Medyo no. mga ghost flights. Uh, we, we're not aware of that, Senator Marcos. <laughs> so, Nakakapalik pa. <laughs> Even paranoids of enemies. Yes. Praning na praning na po kami. <laughs> Okay, Attorney Lim, so anong rinerequest? May maidadagdag ba kayo yes. sa report ng uh, ating NEDA, yes, uh, sa ating economic cluster, at pati ko uh, Presidente? May hinihingi ba kayo na magawa natin? Slide 21, please. Well, specifically, uh, well, this is just a global picture, 30% contraction of travel demand, that's on a global basis, but the brunt of the contraction would be in the Asia-Pacific, obviously, and therefore the number is a lot bigger. And this type of contraction is far greater than the contraction that we experience in SARS. Uh, in terms of the latest estimation, it will now be one trillion uh, in terms of, of losses if we were going an expanded contagion scenario. Uh, next, please. Can we just go fast forward to uh, what the, our neighboring countries provide support to their airline industry? No? Uh, we have, of course, uh, Thailand is providing support in terms of suspending uh, excise tax. Yeah, there's a request, I think, um, almost universally for a lowering of excise tax on aviation and landing fuel. charges, navigational charges. That is equally done by... Income in tax payments. Parang nawala ng gana ang DOF. Yes. Indonesia is providing support in terms of... Uh, reducing landing charges. Uh, Singapore is allocating funds to, uh, for the aviation sector to help uh, employment. And for oh, nakakaingit yan. Ano yun sa Pilipinas? Uh, so far, uh, there is no condition, the equivalent of a cash conditional transfer for the aviation sector, if that is at all feasible uh, Madam Chair, or under consideration. Uh, Attorney Lim, wala ba kayong presentation na sa Philippines, ganito yung nakukuha niya na at the moment? Wala nga eh, uh, there, there, There's none, Senator Binay. Ah, there's none. <laughs> and what we are asking uh, is specifically, now there are two things, if I may just lump it for the moment. One is the cancellation, suspension, waiver of uh, navigational and landing charges. We've estimated that the airline, in, the local airline industry pays about 500 million pesos per month. So that's, that is about 6 billion a year. So any assistance from the government in terms of reduction or cancellation or forbearance will, of course, be helpful. And, and the other thing is the suspension or cancellation of the travel tax. This is a long-standing request of the airline industry because we believe that the travel tax uh, has long... Um, uh, Maybe ask lost. the DOF kung may data kayo, magkano ba taon-taon ang kinokolekta sa travel tax? Gano'n po ba kalaki yung travel tax collection natin, Yusek Ka Beltran? Kung may naaalala po kayo. Travel taxes uh, don't go to the national government. All of it goes to the Philippine, Philippine Tourism Authority. Uh -oh. So uh, it doesn't go to NG. It doesn't affect uh, the national government. Uh Oo, -oh. sa Chesa. So, yes. siguro tanongin na lang natin sa Chesa. Opo, Yusek Edilion, please. Yeah, we have the numbers, mga 2 Land billion a year. Mga 2 billion. 2 billion a year. Oh, maliit lang pala. Uh, Your Honor, if I may say, our... Dami-dami ng pera ng DOH na hindi naman ginagamit sa tamang nga lugar. Sorry, ah. Pero marami akong hugot dyan, eh. Our figure, as so of for 2018, the collection from travel tax is 6.4 billion. So 50% of that goes to TIESA, 40% goes to CHED, 10% goes to the National Cultural Commission. And on top of that, there's a roughly 30% exemption from this travel tax. Uh, there are about 17 categories of exemption, which we feel creates a leakage anyway to this collection. Uh, but more importantly, Your Honor, if this 1,620, if removed, can create a demand stimulation. Uh, it is a major component for a family traveling to our neighbors, which is actually an important stimulus for travel, uh, to make that uh, purchase decision. Uh, so 
we believe these, uh, the slide here shows uh, how 1,620 can benefit. So in uh, the great scheme of things, alin yung priority ninyo? Yung uh, iba't ibang uh, fees na pwedeng tiisin o suspensohin mo na yung kapalata, yung excise tax sa uh, cancellation of fuel. the navigational and takeoff and landing charges. Kasi mas malaki yun eh kaysa yes. sa travel tax sa totoo yes, lang. Yes, Your Honor. Tsaka siguro, Madam Chair, pagdating dun sa travel tax, kung wala rin naman magta-travel, wala rin naman ganong benefit, di ba? But you've already said this sa DOF. I mean, you've written them yeah. or you've already told uh, them. That we, we've coursed it through the civil aviation authority agencies because they participate in the interagency task force. And we have submitted this but already. But so far, no response yet? Uh, no, we've given a follow-up letter requesting for, for this. Uh, we are hoping that they will be able to give us some feedback. Sige, baka Madam Chair, si Yusek Beltran can give us an update kung... No, 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 I'm not talking about yung travel tax, but the other request. Puro si Kaap yan, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Puro Kaap, siguro kalampakin natin ang Kaap. MIA, CAP... Parang wala sa listahan ng NEDA yung Kaap. No, actually, we met with them last week, and this will be among the things that we will be discussing tomorrow sa EDC. Hindi ninyo linagay sa inyong listahan. Pwede bang ilagay din yan? Kasi sa totoo lang, parang... Mahalaga yan kasi sila yung yes, frontline eh. Apa. Pero ang titingnan muna namin kasi may impacto sa mga PPPs natin. So, uh, this will be part of the discussion PPPs? tomorrow. PPPs? Bakit? Yung mga airports natin, marami doon actually naka-PPP. At umaasa sa travel tax? Uh, uh, sa kasama, landing, mga landing, terminal uh, fees, uh, uh, yung mga yon, uh, uh, yung navigational fees yes, na sinasabi. Uh, uh, uh. Sa so, mga PPP. Yeah, yeah. So, yun yung mga uh, na, uh, titignan namin. Yung, eh, kahit sabihin natin na hindi naman panghabang buhay yan i-wave, kundi suspenso muna yung collection sa samantalang nagkakagulo. Actually, so, one is we need to, to look at the uh, nga, potential impact on, on the PPP's revenues. Number two, ano yung instrumentality to, to affect this? Uh, All right, but, Madam Chair. But yung sa excise, excise tax on fuel, I think yan DOF can DOF na yan. decide on that. Yung excise taxes, pwede naman executive yan ang magdecision, di ba? Uh, Madam Asa Chair, Kapitan, please. Madam Chair, uh, our excise taxes are legislated, so. Uh, they're also legislated. <coughs> oh, oh, that's right. Now, oh, I think um, there was a, I'm not sure how much. But there are clauses there that allow for emergencies. We can check, Your Honor. That was for the face increase in the excise tax, Your Honor. Uh, it will no longer hold because we already have reached the maximum Um, tax rate eh. Uh, tapos na po yun. Madam Sir, baka pwedeng pag-aralan nila. Baka, since pwede hindi pag -aralan. Pag -aralan. permanent, uh -oh. baka just a few months, baka hindi na naman kailangan Actually, ng maybe we're not uh, requesting a waiver, perhaps just a suspension of collection for a couple of months. Tignan natin uh, kung ano yung cost moving forward. Uh, are there any other uh, comments or additional uh, suggestions from the tourism and travel industry? Attorney Lim, Attorney Mantaring, please. Uh, Madam Chair, that's uh, basically we, uh, what we did is we consolidated consolidate the data and we provided it to the Executive uh, Director and uh, Vice Chairman of the Air Carriers Association of the Philippines. By the way, Madam Chair, the association is composed of uh, Cebu Pacific, uh, Philippine Airlines, Uh, Palex and uh, Serbgo in their Asia. Ah, so hindi kasali yung uh, mga Royal at yung mga Pacific na naglalanding ng Mumu flights. Uh, they are not members of the uh, Sa association. Sa Katiklan, Kalibo at iba pa. Maraming salamat. Tinapaklas ko lang. <laughs> Siguro just, just to Let her be nai, please. Just to share, because two weeks ago, I conducted a hearing on the impact nga of COVID-19 sa tourism industry. And two weeks ago, ang plan then was to encourage domestic Tourism, but after two weeks, apparently, mukang hindi na ganon yung mind, yung ano kaya yung strategy. So, 
how will you cope na kahit yung domestic mukhang wala na din? In spite of the fact na alam ko meron kayong mga piece of fair and other promotions together with um, DOT. Well, well uh, of course, uh, DOH has not, uh, to, to our understanding, the WHO uh, and the DOH has not come up with any guideline calling for uh, a travel ban domestically or restricting flights. So generally, flights within the Philippines, uh, more so, is pretty much safe in general. I think the general precaution that I have read from Hindi the WHO... Hindi eh. Ang problema, Bobby, eh, talagang nagkaroon na ng local transmission. Ang inaasahan nga, magkakaroon ng clustering ng incidences sa iba't ibang lugar. So, local na yan. And Hindi na yan na uh, international. Siguro, Madam Chair Tahad, kasi sa um, ibang bansa, for example, like Cathay, I think, nag, ano muna sila, di ba, nagparang forced uh, vacation for some of their employees. Are we going towards that direction? Well, it's, that's a question of, number one, economics, uh, because the, the cash drain on the airlines is really dependent on travel demand. And the, the fear of, of flying is initially was due to the lack of information about this uh, COVID-19. Uh, now, I think the, the, the airline industry looks at the situation as government having more information locally and globally about what it is all about. And the challenge has been really assembling the resources needed to, to trace, to check, and screen uh, the, the, the potential spread of, of COVID-19. Uh, so you don't, so in, in so apparently you don't see um, the airline industry going towards that direction na, well, um, we, we, we believe, laying off, but you know, telling them na siguro mag early vacation muna kayo or something. Well, we believe that it is still contained. Uh, given the statistics that we see, there are 10 that we are, we, we, we know. Uh, and I think there are the precautions have been issued by DOH in, in terms of reducing big social gatherings. But we feel that domestic tourism is still an avenue for us, for the airline industry, not to continue uh, earning uh, revenue. And if I may say, uh, the, the vice chairman of the Board of Airline Representatives uh, for Cathay Pacific is here, Mr. Rob. Bradshaw, uh, if, yes, you, if uh, you would like. Yes, the chair like recognizes the uh, vice chair of uh, Board of Airline Representatives of Airline composed of foreign airlines. Thank you very much for coming to our hearing. And um, due to lack of material time, may I just request that you provide us with a position paper so that uh, we hear from the international airlines as well. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, with that, let us proceed. Uh, due to the lateness of the hour and... Uh, a potential violation of human rights not allowing you to eat lunch. Let's just have a working lunch and carry on with the discussion. Eh, tuloy-tuloy po tayo sa OFW kasi abalang-abala yung mga pamilya. Uh, Sang katutak na na Ilocana ang nagtetek sa akin na ma matatanggal daw sila sa trabaho nila at hindi makabalik. Ano po talaga ang sitwasyon? Yes, good afternoon. Administrator Madam. Olalia Yusek uh, Aragon. Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Senator Binay. Yes. With respect to the deployment, no, uh, we still maintain our travel ban to China. No? We don't send OFWs to China. With respect to South Korea, except for the two uh, regions where, where the epicenter of the uh, COVID-19 rose, no? we are sending OFWs to South Korea. We already lifted the uh, travel bans to Hong Kong, Macau, and uh, Taiwan and OFWs are allowed to return to these destination countries subject to the execution of their declaration. Pero nagkakaroon rin ng travel ban against the Philippines and other Asian countries sa Middle East. Nagumpisa yes. na yung Qatar, di ba po? You're right, uh, Madam Chair. Tsaka yung Kuwait, sumunod yes. na rin. So, yes. inaasahan natin na sunod-sunod na rin lahat ng mga iba yes. pa. Yes. Over the weekend, Madam Chair, uh, Kuwait and uh, Qatar declared already a temporary suspension of entry coming from uh, 14 countries, included po ang Philippines. 
So as we speak po, hindi po makakapunta ngayon yung mga OFWs natin sa Qatar at saka sa Kuwait. Madam Chair, yes. dito sa dalawang bansa na to, um, ilang OFWs natin? Hundreds po ang umaalis every day. No? So more or less, so we're talking less about... For January and February last year po, if we compare the data, there are no more than 2,000 to 3,000 OFWs will be affected because of this temporary suspension of entry to these two countries. Sa dalawang bansa pa lang yan? Yes, ma'am. At maliliit na bansa yan, wala pa yung mga Saudi at iba pa? Ang Saudi, ma'am, nag-declare na rin sila ng restriction. If you travel via connecting flight from seven na COVID-infected countries, hindi po sila makakapunta po doon. But if you take the direct flights coming from Philippines, then they will allow the entry of our OFWs. So maybe ask from the administrator of POEA, ano yung way forward natin ito? Anong gagawin natin just moving forward? We are in the process, ma'am, of contacting the employers through our private recruitment agencies with respect to Qatar. No, but is there a plan? Is there a plan? Seeing that there will be a downturn in the deployment and even those who have already been deployed cannot go back, ano ang gagawin natin sa mga OFW na hindi makakapalik sa trabaho? Meron bang uh, ibang options? Anong alternatibong uh, hanap buhay ng mga ito? Yes, ma'am. Ang uh, Department of Labor, ma'am, at saka OWAB, marami po silang livelihood programs, no? They can... Yeah, uh, pero wala sa, wala sa karampot ng kinikita abroad. Yes, at uh, matagal-tagal yan bago kumita. <laughs> Totoo, ma'am. Oh. So, ano po yung ating uh, assistance packages? Yes, ma'am. Kung meron. Ang OWAB po, marami po tayong uh, financial and livelihood assistance to our OFWs. Yes, if we may be updated. At uh, saan sila makakakontak? Kasi lahat kami, nakakatanggap kami ng mga request. Um, are you anticipating na malaking dagok ito sa ating OFW uh, remittances? Sa pagdating sa remittance, ma'am, of course, lalo na yung mga destination countries that they already announced yung suspension of entry, like sa Middle East natin. Okay, yung Europe at yung USA... Wala pang pending. Wala pa mo. Wala pa tayong balita. Yes. Okay. So if you could also provide updated figures on the deployment issues as well as those who can't even go back to work. Yes, ma'am. We will submit the report to this. Ay, maraming salamat. So with that, we go to General Ching Plaza and the rest of the export manufacturing sector who are clearly impacted by valuable supply chains and uh, other issues that involve China with the downturn. Siyempre, pinag-usapan natin si Nadan ng SAPI uh, with the electronics, auto, communications, and other areas. Uh, just brief statements po, and then we will request that you provide us with policy papers. Thank you po. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Um, first, uh, let me express our gratitude to the Honorable Senators for this show of empathy and sensitivity to our cause. Uh, we recently sent a letter to Senator, the Senate President, uh, Tito Soto, and uh, Kapi furnished all the Senators, asking for a careful study and um, delay of the discussion of CITIRA. In in. Kala ko po yung press release and nasabihan daw ko po kayo at sang ayon na kayo sa sitira. Ma'am, that was a few months ago. A few months ago when the these disasters are not yet happening. Pesa, ma'am, for your. Wala pa yung triple threat. 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 Iba na po ang nangyayari ngayon. So ang amin pong pakiusap sa Senado, sa ating mga lumakers na wag po nating i-railroad yung sitira. But instead, carefully study it because our export industries, clients of PESA, are the most affected. We have almost 80% are foreign, foreign companies, export industries. And they are the most vulnerable to world uh, disasters, uh, both uh, man-made and natural disasters, uh, Your Honors. So, katulad sa nangyari ngayon po, uh, 40% of the importations or more no, of our semiconductors and other manufacturing groups are affected because of the closure of the, the uh, their suppliers in China. Dan, ganun 
Dan, la chica, please of SAP to corroborate lang po. Sa electronics ba? Kasi taas ng 40%? Kung China lang po, good morning ma'am. Yung China and Hong Kong, 30%. If you add Taiwan, 40%. If you add South Korea, 53% po. Wala nang matitira niyan pag nasitira pa. Yes ma'am. In fact, in fact, in fact, yung epekto po ng uh, COVID-19 sa PESA industries and uh, ecozones. Number one is yung sinasabi ko nga po, yung uh, suppliers ng importations of our companies no, are, are closed. So, affected na rin po yung job retrenchment uh, at saka yung production quota ng ating mga locators in PESA. Um, just as the global uh, market demand has gone down, So, with the travel bans, na-affected na rin po yung movement of goods, no? import and export. So, there is a delay of uh, the delivery of the, the exportations by the buyers of our industries. And of course, the lowering down of the, um, the production quota of our industries. Speaking of quotas, time, can we just, sorry, ah, yes, kasi nagmamadali tayong lahat. Yung Conweb po, si uh, Marites Agoncillo. I'd like to inquire, loan survivor na kayo ng garment industry natin, na-i-impact ba kayo nitong China COVID virus? Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes. Yes, at the moment, to be exact, and we're already starting factory lineup of the forced leave. Uh, this is, uh, um, I, I'm sure Don knows this, uh, this is our measure when the supply is not coming in because the whole supply chain is affected. Uh, so uh, we're doing like uh, temporary forced leave in some of the factories. Bale, ilan pa, ilan, ilan ng empleyado na nadadari The workers is, uh, under our industry, we have about 280,000, there are about 300,000 direct workers, direct workers. Uh, Out of uh, which, uh, ilan na um, ang pinapa forced leave sa ngayon? It depends on the factory setup. It, it, it's, it's individualized. If the materials are not really coming in fast, then you normally, um, we normally put about, and at, at an average, we have about 3,000 workers per factory. Uh, so at an average, normally we try to minimize it, like uh, about 10%, 5% are on forced leave. But uh, I don't want to expound on that because I don't want to create, <laughs> um, uh, because people are already asking, our workers are already asking. So actually, I'm on my way to Bataan tomorrow, uh, AFAB, to talk to some workers just to explain the, the scenario that it's just a temporary thing and it's a supply market concern at the moment. Thank you very much, Ms. Agoncillo. Madam Chair, siguro before tayo pumunta kay Tita Ching. Siguro kasi may ganong problema ngayon, for example, din sa garment sector. Anong assistance meron yung dole na pwedeng ibigay dito sa mga empleyado na kumbaga mafo-force leave? Yusek Aragon, please. Magandang umaga po, Madam Chair. Senator Binay. Ma'am, um, as stated, we do have budget items that would cater to this particular concern, mm -hmm. the TUPAD and the Adjustment Measures Program, which are all geared towards... Pero malaki-laki po Ay. ang sinasabi nating mga numero, nasa 300,000, tapos yung SAP, ilan na naman yon. Yes, Kapag tinotal nyo yan, uh, ano yes. ang karampatang budget na ibibigay dyan? Kung sakasakali... Right Pantawid, now, gutom. Yes, ma'am. Right now, we're doing pencil pushing relative to our scenarios. No, Kung ito magpipersist. Kanong pera ninyo para dyan? Uh, Kasi sa totoo lang, yung inyong emergency funding, di naman malaki. Hindi Wala po. naman kayong QRF. Kung titignan po natin, ma'am, sa budget ng 2020, uh, 140 million lang po ang adjustment measures program namin. So kung magbibigay kami ng ayuda ng mga 20,000 per person, we can compute more or less that uh, yung warm body so would not be enough. Uh, That's hardly enough. Natupad, At saka, one time, big time lang yan. E napakarain ito. Nagko-compute po kami ngayon so that... Uh, Kung maari, i-compute na po ninyo kasi palagay ko malaki-laki yan. 
uh, matatanggal sa trabaho siguro. Ganon din siguro ang kwento ni uh, Manong Raul Lambino of Sesha. Uh, andito rin ang Sambuanga. Andito rin yung Subic and Aurora and Bataan Freeports na nun ako kahapon. Um, are you beginning to see forced leaves and partial closures of certain lines in factories? Ano po yung sitwasyon ninyo o wala pang epekto sa probinsya? Kasi nananawagan din yung Cebu, yung MEPSA, na talagang hirap na sila. They're barely able to cope, which is why I'll be bringing a committee hearing over to Cebu in, uh, in the next few days, sa Sabado, dahil gusto rin nila na madinig. Good morning, uh, yes. Madam Chair. And Is it true it's your birthday? Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, happy birthday, Pa. Although, I don't seem to have any good news today. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, we have to work even Madam Chair, I have good news. Ililibre tayo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, ma'am, I only, I only celebrate my birthday every 10 years. Eh, so, this is my 62nd birthday. So, I just go to mass later, ma'am. Well, Actually, ma'am, wala naman po kaming uh, masyado sa manufacturing or production in CESA now, but we have already a new investor there, which is the Cagway uh, Corporation. Nakapagtayo na po siya ng warehouse doon at naka Anong nationality? Uh, Taiwanese, ma'am. Oh, so Kagway. wala pang impact. In fact, tuloy-tuloy lang yung kanyang investment. Yes, ma'am. Construction uh, para at saka yung bringing in of the machineries. Pero nag-slow down po sila because of the, uh, the COVID-19. Tapos yung isa po na malaking investor na inaasahan namin papasok na sana sa first quarter, ito po yung textile factory coming from Shaoxing, which is the biggest uh, area where uh, textile is produced Ayun in China. Ayun yata yung binabanggit ni Marita sa Gonsilla noon na biglang nag-back out yata. N hindi pa naman po nag-back out. Sana po ma'am hindi kasi nakahanda na po yung 100 hectares na ibibigay namin sa kanya. Pero si Mr. Chow... Eh, sabi niya, hindi mo na makapunta dyan sa Pilipinas. Tapos yung isa po ay yung investment po ng Wind Magics International para sa windmill doon po sa Santa Ana. This is done in coordination with the uh, Philippine Renewable Corporation sa Department of Energy na magtatayo po sila ng 100 megawatt na windmill doon, farm. At kare-receive ko lamang po ng email from the CEO na hindi pa rin siya makauwi rito sa Pilipinas. To, Tama. Oo. So, ito po yung impact anong, niya, ma'am. Anong gagawin sa napakaraming renewable kung wala ng pabrika? Okay, okay ma'am. Ma yun. yun ang uh, nakakatakot po. Yung AFAB, mukhang gusto ninyong magdagdag ng kaunti sa bataan. Ano ba nangyayari na? Ando nga ako kapon sa Women's Day. Ano bang uh, sitwasyon sa Freeport? Uh, Madam Chair uh, and uh, uh, Madam Senator, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, thank you for gracing us uh, yesterday uh, with your presence, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so far, uh, we, we have been monitoring the employment situation in Bataan uh, as we speak. Uh, there are no immediate contractions, but we have started to see uh, uh, instead of um, having them work for eight hours and additional four hours of overtime, we've, saw, uh, we've seen that uh, overtime uh, work has actually been uh, suspended. Uh, and instead of having six-day work week, uh, they've opted for a uh, five-day work week. So uh, I was also looking at the uh, statistics on the importation uh, compared to 2020 and 20, uh, 2019. Uh, there's still a huge uh, imports that came in for raw materials itong January, but I think that's just going to weather us for another two months. Oh, mauubos at yes. mauubos na rin yan. Correct. Correct. Uh, meron ba kayong BPO? Parang may kinatawan ba ng BPO rito? Kasi abala rin sila. Senator Marcos, oh, okay. good morning Hi. po. Senator Hi, Binay, good morning. Yes. Uh, at least for our sector po, ma'am, uh, it's business as usual. Uh, sa ngayon? Sa ngayon po. Kahit uh, may COVID-19 na nagabalitaan COVID sa BGC at iba pa. Correct. Uh, while we have one confirmed case, mabilis pong naka-take action si yung company at saka with PESA po. Kasi kailangan... Call center worker ba yun? Uh, or more Pogo? Uh, consulting po. Consulting. Opa. Consulting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, maraming salamat. Una-una, dalawang bagay po. No? Sa PESA, yung work from home uh, arrangement. So, uh, nilift po through the LOA, through DG Ching and the DG Abordo. So, malaking tulong po sa BPO yung magkaroon ng work from home options. 
Pangalawa po yung flexible work arrangements and that's through Department of Labor. Uh, actually, yung aming kasama po si Ray Untal ay kasama po ng Dole ngayon. So malaking bagay din po yun. So we expect minimal to a negligible impact at least for ITBPO po. Okay, so nabubuhay pa kayo sa ngayon. Yung uh, sina Mr. Kabigting sa Subic. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Honorable Senator Nancy Binay. We are beginning to feel the effects of the COVID-19 virus, uh, particularly in our port operations, Madam. Um, ship calls declined by 8% compared to uh, the same period in 2019. Container vessels uh, decreased by 10 ships for the period uh, January to February 2020. Raw materials that are sourced from China by our locators are about 40%. 40% of our locators are sourcing raw materials from China. Container volumes dropped by 11,000 TEUs from 48,000 TEUs to 37,000 TEUs or a 20% decrease. Uh, this is as May we request you to submit the data so that we can share it with the rest of the senators and uh, determine action Certainly, forward. Madam. Sige, kung pwede ninyo i-provide. Madami pa yan aside from the cruise ship. The cruise ships, Madam, we Pero maliban have... sa cruise ship, meron ka pang data? Uh, meron din po. We, we canceled... Well, this is our strategy, Madam, because we don't want to offend the cruise uh, line companies. That's right. That's a once, uh, once real growth uh, well, point in yeah, the tourism once sector. Yeah, we get through this problem. Um, so we're relying on their sound judgment to make the call themselves to cancel. Oh, so the wala kayong pinagbabawal sa ngayon. So you leave it up to them muna. Yes. On their, Although uh, we've had some bitter experiences with the Diamond Princess and so on. That one, Madam, uh, we convinced them, uh, we persuaded them in a subtle way that they should call off Subic. Sige, kung maari, uh, bigyan ninyo kami ng datos, and Senator Bina, I think, has a question. Madam Chair, do you agree with this policy, DOH? For them to not make the decision whether or not to dock? So... Ma'am, I think it should be a joint uh, decision po. It is with primarily the, upon the advice po. And we still follow the decision tool para po malaman natin yung sino yung papapasok. Ayun, at hindi ba po. dapat Opo. sila nakikikoordinate sa inyo yes, kung tama ba yung ginagawa yes, nila? But yes, apparently, yes, sila pa rin yung may final say. No. The, actually, po, the process yeah, pero is... Pero nag-uusap naman kayo? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, so, na 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 through the Bureau of Immigration and Bureau of Quarantine. So you're, primarily. you agreed with that policy na antayin muna itong si cruise liner na mag-desisyon kung magdadak sila o hindi? We, we employ uh, hindi. subtle measures Pinap of persuasion, uh -oh. Madam and Senator. Hindi okay. nga, but you know, it's different from us saying na you can't kasi meron tayong problema sa COVID-19. Na In fact... Based dun sa mga stories from other countries, di ba ang nagiging biggest source ngayon ng uh, spread of the disease ay yung, yung mga cruise ships na, I mean, sa US, yun yung nagiging problema nila ngayon. And then, parang tayo, based on your um, um, statement, parang tayo is hesitant pa rin tayo to make that decision whether or not to make them dock or not. No po. Ang, ang, ang the process po, ma'am, is they coordinate with the Bureau of Quarantine and it is the Bureau of Quarantine Nako. who Nako gives na, them Kanina po. ka pa mga decision tool, process, pinag-aaralan. Baka mamatay na tayo ah, lahat eh. Pinag-aaralan pa rin ang DOH. Pinag-aaralan po. It's already a uh, protocol in place because titingnan po ng BOQ po yung nag-a-assess kung ano po yung health situation within the cruise ship and they are the ones who give clearance okay. po. Pero wala tayong clear guidelines. Ah. For example, si cruise ship, pag nag sa Hong Kong, talaga hindi pwede. Ano Ay, yung clear guidelines? Wala pa tayong ganun. Mukhang alam-chamba kung anong masabi, kung anong makakumbinsi. 
Alexander? is already in place po, ma'am. What is in place? That there is a protocol what on how... What is the protocol? The protocol So what is, is it? Can they come or they cannot come? Ano ba talaga? It, it is based on the decision tool if they come from Some countries decision with... decision tool, sino magdi-decide? The decision tool po is based on the DOH uh, released by the Department of Health where in areas... Yeah, so, so, for example, kunyari, may, may, pa, may padating ba ngayon sa subik? Uh -oh. Yes po. So, ito yung mga naka-schedule. Yes, for February and March. Eh, mukhang cancelled na lahat All until of the, uh, the end of March. Uh -huh. Up to April na lang po. Okay. Pero sila no, nag-cancel niyan or uh -huh. cancel? Uh -huh. Sila na po. May, sila uh, sila uh, nag-cancel. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I say it in a different way? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Baka the way you said it, it is not point. right. It's just that uh, we, we don't want uh, we don't want to take the risk of having these cruise, sh cruise ships come to our port knowing the dangers that uh, they pose. But uh, we don't want to lose the market as well as soon as we That's are right. Off. But obviously, primordial in all of this is the safety of, diba, exactly of the ma public. Exactly. Uh, Siguro noon mauuna ang buhay ng Pilipino kaysa sa negosyo. And then we, we make the call at the last... Uh, Kinakabahan ako sa inyo lahat. When we have to make the call, then we do make the call for the ships not to come to our, sh to our port. Yes. Okay, okay. Ma maraming salamat. Madam, Madam, Chair. Madam Chair, can you just submit Madam. to us what is oh. a clear-cut policy? Um, kung sabi mo, may mahiwagang protocol, decision tool, process, at iba pa, pahingi na lang ng kopya kapag hindi ko naintindihan, malamang hindi rin naintindihan ng iba. Okay lang. Sige, submit na lang. Okay? And uh, I appreciate receiving from attorney kabigting the data. Okay? Sige, maraming salamat. Alam po ninyo, dito sa sinasabi nating triple threat, we're already at 12 o'clock. We're only at the first threat. Ang second threat that we need to hear about is the abrogation of the VFA. Obviously, its legality has uh, been questioned and uh, there are certain uh, measures even here in this chamber of the Senate that uh, 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 make us uh, think twice about it. Ang kinakailangan ko maintindihan, yung economic impact lamang ng VFA. Ano ba ibig sabihin na yan? At ano ba ang impact immediately sa ating GSP? Kasi narito, I think uh, Mr. John Forbes is here of AmCham. I think the DND is also here. And I know that the Air Force is more or less panicked by the prospect of no VFA and armed support. Mm, maybe here from the DND, given that uh, you are the, uh, in the group in charge, General Cabreros, please. Uh. The third threat that uh, everyone is calling the third uh, whammy, the triple whammy, is yung Sitira. Tapos yung domestic threat, meron pang ASF, may taal eruption in the richest, biggest uh, region in the Philippines. Pakatapos yung impending uh, deadline ng AMLA dahil naririnig ng lala ang ating mga an man money laundering activities involved sa Pogo at iba pa. Okay, so would the DND like to uh, make a uh, statement regarding VFA po? I have a question, Your uh, uh, I'm uh, representing the Endreams uh, here with regards to the uh, addressing the COVID-19. Ah, sa COVID rin kayo? Yes. So, kasi nakita ko, Yusek Halad. Ah, si Yusek Halad pala? Wal wala, oh, ritong, uh, wala ritong uh, ibang DND. So, okay. Ganito na lang po. PCVF. Kayo na lang po, Yusek. Rambo, Bawang, Ram. Minam murder ko po. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, good mo, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, the the uh, BFA was discussing. If in the uh, you would please uh, explain PCVF po. Maraming alphabet sub dito. And alin po ba yon? Presidential Commission on Visiting Forces. Ah yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. thank At, you. That is the uh, General Adan po. Yeah, yes, ma'am. 
Okay, gets ko na. Ma'am, last time, uh, the, the uh, Visiting Forces issue was uh, heard in the uh, Senate plenary and uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, uh, you know, gave, gave a briefing on uh, the Visiting Forces Agreement. For, for the economic uh, impact, uh, the, the uh, department now ready to brief that is uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs. And dito ba yung DFA natin? Ah, ayan pala. Yeah. I uh, recall, if I may, and uh, the statement is on record by the Secretary, Secretary Loxin, that the Philippines and the U.S. robust economic relations may be affected. Um, the U.S. is the third largest partner. It is our biggest export market, our fourth largest import source. And the healthy state of our bilateral trade investments and tourism may be imperiled. The U.S. is the Philippines' fifth largest source of investments, the third largest tourism market, and the uh, largest source of ODA and grants. So uh, this may dry up as a result of the abrogation of VFA. Sinabi po ito ni Secretary Loxin sa plenario bago ay hindi sa committee na nung panahon na yun, hindi pa na abrogate yung ating uh, yung ating treaty. No? So, meron bang uh, maidadagdag ang ating uh, grupo galing sa VFA? Thank you po for the correction. Yusek Iparagire. Uh, yes. Um, Good afternoon, uh, Your Honors, uh, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for inviting us uh, to participate in this hearing. Um, perhaps I can put the, uh, in its uh, proper context uh, the statement of uh, Senator, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Secretary Loxin. He also mentioned in his statement the following points. Uh, first, the VFA does not encompass the entirety of Philippines-U.S. relations. Uh, the two countries remain committed to their long and enduring friendship rooted in shared history. Yes, that's history. all right. Uh, we, we, we are not concerned uh, with foreign policy as such right now. We are much more uh, worried about economic impact. Mm -hmm. So planning forward for uh, a basic risk assessment, ano pong madagdag natin? Um, Madam Chair, the VFA is a defense cooperation agreement. Uh, there's nothing, no language uh, in the VFA uh, that directly links uh, the VFA with uh, economic cooperation with the United States. Now, the framework yes. for our economic um, I think trade there is, however, no doubt that there will be humongous costs accrued by our AFP kapag nawalan tayo ng military assistance. Given po yun, that has been stated and restated and reiterated by our AFP. Maliwanag po yun. Mm -hmm. Pero maliban dyan, um, there are certainly um, less friendly trade conditions that uh, may follow. Is that not correct? Um, Madam Chair, we continue to engage uh, with uh, our counterparts uh, in the U.S. Uh, indeed, they are our um, third uh, largest uh, uh, trading partner. Um, as you mentioned earlier, a major source of investment, development assistance, and tourist arrivals. Opa. And um, we continue to engage with our counterparts uh, There's in the no US. There's no doubt. So We're doing the best we um, can, uh, we can, my cousin. We can move forward with the bilateral relations following the abrogation of the VFA. And uh, in our engagement with the U.S., uh, particularly with representatives from the U.S. Embassy here in Manila, um, they wanted uh, to assure us that uh, the U.S. also want to ensure that our relations remain productive overall. Okay. So there are assurance. On Thank you very the much. And well. uh, we learn from you. It is your job to be diplomatic. We are not so diplomatic. Um, and unfortunately, we are in possession here in receipt of the letter from uh, the U.S. Senate that is quite alarming, dated February 11, and to which the palace has already responded to the ambassador, the United States Trade Representative, um, so recommending that the U.S. government, through the GSP subcommittee, remove the Philippines 
from uh, the Federal Register of the GSP effective July 1 this year. So uh, this seems to be a quite drastic uh, result and consequence. Perhaps we can call um, on Mr. John Forbes of the American Chamber for his take on this very dire uh, future. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Binai, uh, of course I cannot speak for the U.S. government. Uh, the, uh, the GSP that is enjoyed by the Philippines is under the WTO. It's quite similar, for example, to uh, the uh, EU GSP and the EU GSP Plus, uh, except the United States does not have a plus for uh, a number of important exports, uh, such as footwear and uh, garments and uh, uh, leather goods that uh, <coughs> recently were added to GSP. And GSP will go away in a few years when the Philippines reaches a middle income status for a period of at least three years. Uh, something DIT is very aware of, and one reason why the D, D, uh, DTI has been uh, talking about uh, doing a bilateral FTA with the United States, but we have an election coming up this year, and usually FTAs are not very popular to do uh, in an election year. Uh, as for the Senator, I would remind everyone that uh, just as in the Philippine Senate, uh, one or two Senators taking a position is not necessarily all of the Senators. All of those senators are Democrats. All of those senators are particularly sensitive to the concerns of human rights groups in their constituencies. Yes, and we're and aware they do not of that, Mr. The whole. So yeah. I, my, my take on it uh, is that uh, uh, periodically uh, USTR looks at different countries under GSP. Uh, the Philippines hasn't had such a comprehensive look for a number of years. So I think it uh, could be expected when that occurs, at some time maybe later this year, these concerns would be taken up. But uh, I look at the trade relationship at AmCham, we look at that as different from the defense relationship. We do think that the impact of pulling away from uh, the, these agreements we have in Korea, we have in Japan, and not having that here, will have some impact uh, on our investors in, uh, uh, in concern about uh, the future uh, uh, defense uh, of the Philippines. And we certainly agree with those estimates on costs, the enormous costs uh, that were written about by a former Philippine Air Force Chief of Staff in his column yesterday are certainly important to consider. Thank you. Yes, thank you. However, I don't have such a sanguine outlook on uh, the American legislature's actions. Uh, if you recall, the uh, budget uh, provision that uh, banned anyone who was in the uh, line of action towards the imprisonment of Senator uh, De Lima began with a mere two congressmen. And thereafter, a third congressman joined, and eventually it became a reality. In this case, we are saying that there are only six Democratic senators who've signed this letter. However, the impact would be overwhelming. And I see SAPI, as well as CONWEB, frantically raising their hands. Does Marites uh, Agoncillo want to say something? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I'm not sure if it's to add to what John mentioned, but in our in our sector, um, first and foremost, garments is not enjoying GSP. However, in 2016, we managed to get 28 tariff lines of Chapter 42 for leather goods from the United States Congress to enjoy GSP. And this is the industry now that's about $706 million, right? Uh, now, the impact is, and I could say this now because I just got uh, emails over the weekend from major buyers like Coach, Kate Spade, the U.S. brands, Michael Kors. Um, you have to understand the impact. Uh, I, I'd like to, um, there is an impact because most of the investors for leather goods, for example, and if there's a threat for GSP, hosted in the Philippines are also located in other countries like Cambodia, uh, 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 Vietnam. So uh, when, when an investor manufacturer is got an order from the U.S. side and there's this threat that the GSP status or the duty-free status of the Philippines is under threat to enter the United States and you're, you're looking like at anything between 10 to 17 percent of bags and uh, up to 20 percent duty. So they're starting to move these orders out of the Philippines because of a mere threat. 
of a possible GSP impact lost on us because of the VFA abrogation. That's, there is a threat. Yes, there is a very serious threat uh, to my mind. In the meantime, allow me to release uh, subject to their submission of the requested data, reports, and other protocols, the uh, so-called decision tool. DOH as well as NDRRMC being at the other frontliners in this war against COVID-19. You may go now, but the rest of us need to plow through the rest of this. Thank you. Okay. So is there anyone who would like to add from the DTI kung uh, ano pa ang uh, um, maasahan natin? Kasi yung trade, uh, yung trade balance natin sa Amerika, liyamado ang Pilipinas. Mas marami tayong binibenta sa kanila kesa sa binibenta nila sa atin. So talagang lamang tayo. Ngayon sa VFA, anong mangyayari nito? Bibili pa kaya sa Pinoy ito? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, from the DTI's uh, point of view, uh, we uh, of course understand this, uh, the potential implication of uh, the VFA uh, on Philippine-US trade and investment. We, we know that the US market is the biggest export uh, for Philippines, and at the same time last year it was the biggest source of foreign direct investments. However, we think that the economic benefits from uh, this uh, relationship, which is, has been uh, perennial, and has been strong for many decades will continue despite a potential policy change in this uh, VFA abrogation. We know that the trends coming from U.S. businesses uh, in light of the COVID outbreak will tend to be dampened uh, and that is similar to the rest of the world. And that has been, of course, uh, uh, evident in the uh, leading indicators showing some slowdown in manufacturing activity, in trade, etc. But we also note that uh, as similar to many of the expectations coming from both governments and the private sector, that this is a temporary aberration, it's going to be a short-lived uh, event, and that economies as well, including China in particular, will rebound strongly from the uh, adverse effects of the COVID uh, 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 impact. And similarly, with respect to the VFA, uh, we continue to enjoy strong relations with the U.S. We have our trade okay. representatives or commercial attaches uh, continually talking to their counterparts, the U.S. trade representatives uh, officials there. And there is still, of course, a, a positive outlook in relation to having a bilateral free trade arrangement or FTA that will, of course, replace the GSP that we currently have. Eh, nila bibigay yung FTA? Eh, tayo nga ang uh, nag-refuse ng VFA. Parang, parang inaasar na nga natin eh, di ba? Uh, yes, ma'am. Sabi, uh, sabi nga ni Presidente Trump, di ba hala kayo, makakamura pa kami. Uh, thank di ba you. ganun yung sagot? Parang wala siya sa mood makipag-preferential uh, trade agreement ulit. Well, then, the, our observation from, here, from this uh, recent uh, development is the economic relationship will continue to be positive. That, oh, sige. That's our Kasi ma masisisante sa trabaho sa DTI pag hindi yan ang sinabi mo. Hindi, <laughs> biro lang. Inaasar lang kita. Uh, uh, no, thank you, ma'am. Let's, uh, let's uh, to put it fairly, uh, would it be fair to say, therefore, that immediately there will not be any dire consequences, but in the medium to long term, we will not see any further future investment? Is that correct, Mr. Forbes, uh, Ms. Agoncillo, and the DTI? I'm not trying to get I, you fired. No, I, 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 I would agree in, in the medium. I can't predict the long term. But even UNCTA, there's a story in the paper today, it's just estimated globally that FDI will fall 5 to 15 percent a year. Last year, FDI and ASEAN went up 19 percent, more than in China. So uh, the Philippines is the outlier in this because it fell. It's, uh, when BSP puts out their figures uh, later this week, you'll see about a 30% drop to 7%. So if you apply the UNCTAD prediction to that, you might have FDI going down 6%. Uh, one of the causes, of course, is Satira. We've been dealing with this issue since December of, uh, uh, of uh, 19, uh, 2017. 
And we know this is under interpolation uh, this week. Uh, the interpolation has started in the Senate, and the executive branch is pushing for you to complete that by Wednesday. What we would encourage is we did do a letter, the Joint Foreign Chambers with uh, the associations to my left, which we sent uh, to Senator Cayetano. We appreciate the efforts of the executive and the legislative body to try to get this done, but we do have some key issues that we've written all of you about, and we want to get beyond Satira and back to the job of, of creating jobs and doing more investments here. Yes, may I encourage the different groups uh, that represent export and led by General Ching Plaza to please come up with a comprehensive report. I think uh, this so-called triple whammy that we have uh, um, received of late came in, uh, came in singly. So yung mga position paper ninyo, isa-isa, response sa COVID, response sa VFA, pagkatapos yung uh, position papers po ninyo sa sitira. Pwede bang cumulative damage ang i-report po ninyo? Kumbaga, ano yung cumulative damage sa iba't ibang pro export processing zone? In the meantime, may I finally call upon the DOF. Do you still have the heart or the appetite to inflict sitira on these poor exporters? May puso pa ba kayo? <laughs> Ayan. Inday, tanong natin kay Yusek Beltran po. So, Yusek Beltran, uh, Asek Habitan, ayaw na sumagot ni Yusek Hill eh. Talaga naman. Okay, uh, sige, yeah, Asek apa. Habitan, kayo naman daw ang uh, kontrabida ngayon. Uh, Your Honor, lagi naman pong kami yung kontrabida. Uh, to your question, whether we still have the heart, we always have had the heart, and that's why we're pushing for Sitira. Siguro po, ang concern natin ngayon is, the longer that we wait for this, it's the lingering uncertainty to the companies, to the businesses, because they cannot do forward planning. Uh, we have reached a lot of agreements already. Uh, uh, much of the positions have already been discussed, and we've reached some sort of, parang ando na tayo sa medyo balance na. We've also um, received um, statements of support from, um, from various Ano po yung balance doon? Confirm sang ayon ba kayo o gutom na lang kayo at pagod na? Uh -huh. Yung mga export sector, travel sector, <laughs> balance na raw yung sitira. Um, uh, Your Honor, in the case of, for example... Actually, yung balance na sinasabi ni ASEC, if I may, yeah. baka ang ibig sabihin po ninyo na revenue neutral. Yung mawawala sa deduction yeah. sa corporate income tax, kikitain yes. sa rationalization, so-called, of tax incentives yes. to exporters and other groups. Tama po ba? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I think it is in this with this regard because we have already, uh, I think all the hearings that we've undertaken through the last three years, we've reached this sort of position. And May I inquire, just uh, <clears throat> very simplistically, we're not economists. Um, Magkano ba ang mawawala sa corporate income tax deduction? Um, let me call a friend. Uh, <laughs> your Honor. Lifeline, lifeline po. Yun ang sabi uh, ng pesa. Director uh, Juvi uh, can give the answer to that. Because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a number that we have tried to estimate very well. We've also tried to estimate it in the Senate. And sa pakiwari namin, hindi po revenue neutral. Talagang ang laki ng babayaran ng exporter. Okay po, ASEC please. Director po. Magkano ang uh, mawawala sa ating corporate income tax deduction? Even at a very conservative pace of 1% deduction a year. Um, we estimated, Madam Chair, it's around 21 billion pesos po for every percentage. 21 billion. Opo. 21 billion a year. Yes, Ang, po, that's a very straightforward computation. Po. Iba pwedeng kolektahin sa 54 billion ng pogo na hindi binabayaran, pwera pa yung franchise fee? Actually, Madam Chair, yung po kasing package to uh, taken as a whole. So the reduction is not really just the reduction by itself. It's also the rationalization of fiscal incentives, not taking away the incentives, but making sure that the reform is effective po. So, hindi lang po siya basta pagbaba ng corporate income tax. 
Madam What's Chair? the projection naman sa kikitain dun sa rationalized so-called tax incentives? Magkano naman ang kikitain? Sa Actually, unang taon, halimbawa, dun sa 235 o dun sa Actually, kung ano-anong Chair, formulation. Yun po din yung sinasabi ni ASEC Habitan na binabalanse kasi po medyo hinabaan na po natin yung transition. So sa sunset, uh, during sunset, wala pong kita from rationalization. Yes, as a kapitan, please. Yung, After sunset. Yes, sa uh, sunset. Yung uh, 235 na ba? Sang-ayo na po kayo? Sa 2 years, 3 years, 5 years? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So, ibig lang pong sabihin nun, the longer the sunset period is, that means we are not changing the rules as quickly as we uh, first propose. So, ibig sabihin, wala kaming makukuha muna doon sa pag-rationalize. Yeah, but after sunset, magkano yung makukuha? Um, balik po ulit doon sa kabila. <laughs> Asik grande. Call a friend. Ay, sorry. Sorry po. <laughs> Nakaupo lang po ako. Pasensya na. Ah... Uh, Dadobo check ko lang po kasi po binabalansi po natin yung doon sa pagbaba din po, tuloy-tuloy na pagbaba ng corporate income tax. Kasi bawat, sabi Hindi ko nga, nga po, kasi, bawat... Kasi nga, eto nga eh, ang problema kasi, doon sa 21 billion, yung ikalulugi naman ng ating mga exporter, parang mas malaki pa eh. Kaya hindi namin na uh, pinaniniwala na revenue neutral si Sitira. Kaya gusto namin yung numbers. Ay, hindi naman po lalabas na revenue neutral in the first two or three years eh. Kasi negative nga po yung 21 billion Kaya nga, sa what amin eh. will be the amount at after which, the sunset? Yun na nga. Uh -oh. At which point do we, we become actually revenue neutral? Kasi may sense na pigampiga na yung mga exporter, travel at iba pa. Pakatapos yung uh, corporate income tax, eh kukunti lang naman ang nawawala sa 1%, 1%. Tingi-tingi lang naman yun. Uh, I see Mr. Dan La Chica jumping up and down here. <laughs> Th thank you, Your Honor, Senator Binay. Uh, just to put in perspective, uh, the, the revenue generation of the electronics industry is $43 billion. And if you look at the COVID risk, that could easily be zero this year, depending on how long it takes. Now, as far as Citira is concerned, uh, we support the reduction of the corporate income tax, the first part. What we're concerned about is for the export industries is the treatment of the uh, rationalization. Uh, we appreciate the fact that a uh, sunset period has been uh, uh, given, but, and again, I don't want to be bearer of gloom and doom, but it's very possible that multinationals after the sunset period will still move out because as it is today, uh, they have already triggered their uh, um, contingency plans. Naturally, which, I, uh, yeah. corporate planning is uh, medium and long term. Yes. Uh, obviously, they need to put their plans in place. Yes. In fact, one company that was told to, if they're not happy here, go to Vietnam, they actually went to Vietnam last year to look at the incentives that Vietnam is giving, which is superior to what the Philippines is offering. Chair. Yes, Senator B. Uh, siguro, in light of this COVID-19, hindi ba pwede pag-aralan ng DOF? Baka pwede ibigay na na muna natin itong lowering of corporate tax na hindi kasabay itong rationalization of incentives. Total yung sinasabi po ninyo, di naman kayo kikita ng two years. Di po po na muna yung ibang sitira, yung tira, itira muna sa two years. Ba pwedeng pag-aralan nyo na will be part of the economic ano ba, stimulus program in light of this COVID problem na wala muna tayong rationalization pero meron tayong lowering of corporate income tax. Your Honor, parang ganun naman po ang lumalabas dahil um, ibababa naman yung, yung um, CIT at the same time dahil nga mas mahaba yung transition period. Ibig sabihin yung Fiscal incentives that cur are currently being enjoyed, especially by our exporters, mananatili pa rin siya. Hilbaan nga po natin yung sunset provision eh. Um, I think but we, in light of this problem that we have now, baka yung sunset provision nyo is not sufficient anymore. Kasi nga, marami sa kanila, uh, expectation nila for this year, eh, the numbers are not, not okay. And then, tapos meron pa tayong um, 
may VFA pa, hindi pa natin alam kung anong kalamidad yung pwedeng dumating sa atin. So, hindi ba pwedeng pag-aralan niya? Maybe you can do the numbers and, I mean, check the numbers again. Baka kaya naman na mag-lower muna tayo ng corporate income tax, tax without rationalization of incentives. Um, uh, Your Honors, <laughs> can I share our, our experience yes, in Okay, Pesa? General Chen yes. uh, Plaza. Ma Ma thank you. We're, we're the most affected because as I mentioned earlier, almost 80% of our clients in Peza are foreign exporters. Question and lang, intriga lang. Opo. Bakit lahat ng kapangyarihan binibigay sa BOI under the new animal exactly. ng finance act? Ex exactly, ma'am. Ano uh, nangyari sa Peza? Bakit uh, pwede nagdalaan? Nang kapangyarihan, uh, hindi totoo. Nandun po sa repealing clause ng Senate version na uh, tinanggal po sa PESA ang authority. Bakit hindi uh, ka na-type? Bakit? <laughs> Siguro dahil kami, kami po yung maingay. Kami po yung maingay. Madam, just for, just for the record, madam, um, uh, we are, what, what we really wanted together with our industries, uh, to, to test city refers to the domestic enterprises because this is the first time that our domestic enterprises will be given incentives by government. Uh, the, the incentives package for the exporter should remain because it is already tried, tested, and proven and globally competitive, Your Honors. Hindi, nag lang po ako kasi may bagong uh, animal na ang pangalan FIRB yes, po. na hindi naman natin natitikman pa mm -hmm. makatapos ang head, Secretary of Finance, na ang tanging trabaho ay eh, mangolekta. Opo. Eh, samantalang, ang kinakailangan dyan, investment generation, mm -hmm. employment, trade, mm. promotion ng export. Opo. Parang baliktad po. Bakit mm -mm. na baliktad yung batas? Uh, dapat mm. yung unahin natin yung kumikita. Yes. Eh, pero ito, una yung revenue exactly. uh, collection. Parang, mm. teka muna, walang makokolekta kung walang kumikita. That's right. Uh, in fact, ma'am, uh, the, the threat now is, uh, you know, our, our exporters has many branches. They have many branches all over the world. So the possibility of uh, being unhappy with a, uh, the type of uh, sitira, they will, they will really transfer. So this will affect the 1.5 million directly employed by our PESA industries. And uh, those indirectly employed, together with directly employed, we have now a total of 8 million. So this will be uh, 8, million. 8 million directly and indirectly employed by Teka, our exporters. Teka, yun direct? Sa PESA pa lang yan? Sa po, PESA pa lang yan? Hindi PESA pa lang yan. PESA lang po. That's Pesa all over the Philippines? Uh, 105 uh, LGUs out of 1,600. LGU ba yan? O LGU host, hosting ah, ecozones. Pero we now have have employers sa ating mga PESA zones, PESA buildings, at iba pa. We, we have now 4,000. Uh, including yung BPO. We have now uh, 4,000 plus, uh, your honors, uh, export uh, enterprises under PESA. Okay, pero and how many employers? Do you have any data, Dole, please, Yusek Aragon? Uh, may data ba kayo nung mga nasa PESA buildings, pati yung eco zones, yes, pati yung yes, DOI areas na for export na alam naman natin eh, matatamaan ng sitira? Madam Chair, may we submit today? Okay. Based on our registration. And That's fine. Thank you. Ma'am, we you. have, we uh, have sa, sa, 4,531. 4,531. Those are the zones. I'm talking no, about no, the number of employees. No, ma'am. These are locator employ. companies. No, These the number employees. of employees po ang hinihingi. 1.5 million, all in all. Directly employed. Yun ang direct. Them. Sinasabi nyo, yung total, yung suma 8 kapag direct and indirect. Kas, opo. Kasi ito po yung mga employment created by truckers, brokers, suppliers, forwarders. O syempre, pati tricycle, ka, ka, karinderia, lahat na. Diba? Hindi po. Yung indirectly na talagang nag, nag do business in the eco zones. Oo nga. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. So we have uh, 331 eco zones. These are horizontal and vertical. Uh, po. Um, may I ask, I mean, we've heard a little bit of the DOF's position. Anong hinihingi ninyo? 
ang hinihingi po ng PESA, ma'am, is status quo as much as possible because our present incentives are tried, tested, Wala, and proven. Wala, nakasimangot na lahat ng uh, <laughs> DOF. Hindi daw pwede status um, quo. Ma'am, I hope the chair will ask. Kalala forever, lalo nang walang forever sa tax incentive. Ma'am, we are globally competitive. If you're going to ask our industries, they will tell you why are they investing in the Philippines. It's not because of the cost of doing business because we are one of the highest uh, in cost of doing business. It's because of the incentives of PESA, which is tried, tested, and proven. Mukhang masakit ang ulo ni Asik Tan, <laughs> Asik Kapitan. Uh, please uh, respond. Your Honor, if indeed PESA enterprises are globally competitive, why do they need fiscal incentives in the first place? Ma and uh, ma'am, wait lang. Po. Uh, based on our study, uh, we studied of over 1,322 uh, financial statements of uh, locators. And what it showed was that the return on investment remains very high, even if you change the incentive system. So this means that if you combine this with the reduction in, in uh, the CIT rate, then the fear of job losses may indeed be too um, pessimistic. We don't see that uh, there will be job losses arising from uh, a change in the incentive. And since, as again, the sunset provision um, is longer than what we initially proposed, and we have already agreed to that, then I think we can mitigate the fear of job losses in, uh, on this score, Your Honor. Yes, um, Yusek Aragon, do you agree na kayang-kaya na pawiin ng dole at iba pang mga em employer dito sa Pilipinas? Itong 1.5 direct directly employed, tsaka yung 8 million indirect kung isusuma. Ano ang position ng dole dito? Madam Chair, we tend to agree with uh, DOF. Based on a third party study. I, I'm not trying to get you fired either, Po. <laughs> but we. Ayalang eh, malaki laki yung 8 million na sinasabi. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we contracted a third party study uh, quite recently and they made a presentation to Secretary Silvestre Bello. Indeed, the, the statistics match relative to. Um, the how, how do they match? Saan daw pupunta yung 1.5 directly employed? Maga abroad sila at mababayro sila. Wala namang papasukang trabaho dito sa atin. At uh, problema naman natin, eh, kukonti na nga lang, lumiliit yung domestic market. Saan tayo pupunta? Ma'am, there will be compensating, uh, compensating or mitigating measures uh, based on... Oh, eh, di ba, kakaramput na nga lang yung emergency funding ninyo eh. Sa 20,000 per head, 150 million, magkano lang yun? The absorptive capacity. Ma'am, hindi ang, ang the job displacements won't really be there. Pero yung job tangible. displacement na sinasabi ni Ching Plaza, eh talagang immediate yan. Automatic yan. We, eh sinasabi na nga, may forced leave na nga daw sa garment sector eh. Pero, Madam Chair, Yes, Senator sa Binay, please. Sa figure niyo ba, ilan, ilan, ano yung numero sa inyo for job displacement? Uh, minimal po. Uh, what is minimal to you might not be minimal to, to them. Minimal, ma'am, in the sense that uh, job displacements won't really be that, uh, between twenty to 30,000. Only for you. But do you agree with that number? Yes, yeah, 20, when we call on 30, uh, the BPO, Nick... Uh, the export sector, Sapi, Dan, Marites, Mr. Forbes. Um, hindi daw totoo na 1.5 million ang directly mawawala ng trabaho, kundi ang mawawala ng trabaho lamang ay 20 to 30,000 ayon sa dole. We, uh, <coughs> the four groups represented today presented their estimates on September 24th. That was based on the House Pass Bill. Now, the Senate committee report is quite different, and it's only been around for about uh, two weeks. I don't think anybody has fully studied clearly the job losses projected, with which I see uh, USEC uh, 2 has arrived. DOF disagreed with their estimates at the time. Uh, they're much uh, less. They're going to be much less. And not not 1.5 million. 
No, we projected uh, 112,000 the first year direct jobs, and then a multiple of that for indirect for a total of 700,000. But that was last September. The, the, as as uh, Issa Kabitari just pointed out, the transition period has been extended. We, in our position paper, we submitted to the uh, committee chair last week. We, we recommended extending that to 10 years. We also were looking at a transition period for RHQs. Uh, maybe uh, there have been some discussions with DOF about the RHQ industry as well. And there are other recommendations in there. I just hope that the, uh, uh, the committee chair and the Senate will take a look at the recommendations. Uh, I, we, we have sympathy going back to the beginning of this exercise with what Director General Plaza has said. We used to say, it ain't broke, why fix it? But clearly, uh, the will of the current administration in the Philippines has been to fix it, so we're trying to have a soft landing for everybody. And then, as I said earlier, let's get back to the job of bringing in more investment to the Philippines. Would the, the uh, sum total of 700,000 jobs lost reflect, Nick, the BPO? I know that uh, over a million are employed directly. Yeah. So to date, ma'am, we have 1.3 million uh, direct employees and about 4.1 million uh, indirect. Uh, in that study that see Mr. Forbes was referencing to, ang sinasabi po namin, at least for BPO, and we've shared this po with ASIC Tutay, uh, uh, Ms. Aragon, is uh, it's, it's lost opportunity. Kasi when, when we created po our roadmap, uh, we predicted or projected about 100,000 jobs. Now with that, and third party study din po, and we share this study, it's just gonna be about 55 to 60,000 jobs. So that's about 40,000 jobs that we're missing, na sana po ay may dadala dito sa Pilipinas, and those are uh, 40,000 direct jobs po. Madam Chair? Uh, do, tapusin lang natin si uh, Shaipi at si Conweb, okay lang? Hindi, pero... Okay, ah, si Senator, si uh, uh, sa BPO, oh. Senator Binay, please But, proceed. Kasi ang binigay mo lang na numero is yung potential Loss. jobs na nawala. That's But correct. yung actual na mawawala with um, si Tira, May ganun numero ba for BPO? Yung, uh, yung current po, ma'am, ang sinasabi namin is if it passes in its current form, yun po yung potentially na hindi natin makukuha. We're, we're still going to show growth, um, about 55 to 60,000 po. Um, and yung sayang lang talaga is yung lo what we call lost opportunity or missed opportunity is that 400,000 potential jobs po. Ayun, yeah. So you don't see yung present na with nandito the current, na with, with the present, aalis dahil dun sa si Tira, Walang ganon sa BPO. Wala po tayong ganon. Ang sinasabi po natin is that missed opportunity center, Binay. Okay. Sa kina, kina SAPI at CONWEB naman, uh, kayo meron talagang loss sa uh, manufacturing. Well, ma'am, uh, to put in perspective, ano, when CITIRA, uh, I guess, was publicized, there were about $1.2 billion of expansions directed towards the Philippines that were moved to other countries, right? And today we haven't really seen um, much expansions because the nature of our industry is if you don't expand, you don't bring in the new products. And what you're gonna end up with is uh, a set of products that are what we call legacy or will be obsoleted over time, some sooner than others. The first year consumer products, smartphone uh, components and stuff, longer automotive electronics. So the number that John uh, mentioned earlier, about 300,000 of those were based on that premise. About 50% of those countries will exit. Now, um, in fairness, the Senate version of Cetira is much better than the House version. Okay, but there are certain uh, uh, two or three concerns that we'd like to uh, uh, have been considered, including uh, the lowering of the threshold for exports and maintaining the uh, approval authority of uh, PESA. In my estimation, because some companies have already left, and when we assume that we're going to be generating funds from uh, the CITIRA uh, reform, we're assuming that the countries who are here will continue. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm concerned that after the sunset period, they may still depart because some of them are looking at Vietnam already. So yes, I've heard of many um, uh, f familiarization groups coming out of our different uh, EPSAs to uh, our neighbors. Um, 
Are you saying on record then, uh, JP, represented by Mr. Dan Lachica, that uh, you are in support? Kaya na ninyo yung two years, three years, five years ng Senate? We support the Is that your negotiating position? Uh, Ma'am, we support the reduction of corporate income tax. We're still uh, trying to reconsider. <laughs> We're still hoping to reconsider the two or three things that we've uh, lodged and submitted to DOF and the Senate. So, what's the uh, position? What can you live with? Doon sa tax incentives para maliwanag kami sa DOF at pati sa mga kasamahan namin sa Senado. Well, we were told that uh, grandfathering is out of the question. We were told that uh, sunset period can't be extended beyond 10 years. Uh, so, uh, we were hoping to get the 10-year extension sunset period. We're hoping that the threshold to uh, uh, below, export uh, threshold be lowered to 90%. And we're, ho we're hoping that uh, PESA's uh, approval... Parang yung 10 years, walang makinig. Yung 90% may pag-asa ba? I know, DOF, anyone? You said, Carl, since you just arrived, anyone interested to answer? They, uh, they're saying the 10-year period, parang walang may gustong kumibo. Yung uh, tawaran sa 90% instead of 100% export, can that be considered? Uh, Ma'am, if they provide data, we can try to check. That, has, that is what I requested from them two weeks ago. Then we can consider once we see the data. The other issue there, I think, particularly with the BPO, is the 10,000 uh, employee minimum. That, that's correct. And we took it up na po, uh, with uh, you, said Carl. Ma'am, I think uh, yung stand po namin, and I just wanted to add at least specific. And as much to the as BPO. we're very clear that very few will take uh, advantage of that clause. Correct. And we also, so we are very much aligned but with uh, manufacturing or SAPI. Uh, the fourth item, but which also we shared with Committee on Labor's uh, Senator Binay, is the Structural Adjustment Fund. Um, iba po kasi talaga yung technological advancements. And what we're saying is uh, we need a, uh, an allotment for the reskilling and upskilling of the 1.3 million. Um, and that's one of the key asks. So we were agree we agreed on the three points, but for BPO specifically, we need at least the structural adjustment fund to be looked into specific to upskilling and reskilling talent. Po. Yes, I have a question uh, to the DOF, and uh, that's with regard to the BPO. What is the definition of footloose industries? In as much as it would appear, at least to me, that the most footloose would be BPO, and yet I am told that they cannot um, take advantage of that exemption. Is that correct? What is the definition of footloose? Uh, Madam Chair, in the bill, it defines footloose as being, number one, in manufacturing, number two, outside NCR, with a labor capital ratio of 70%, and also with 10,000 jobs. That is what the bill committee report uh, says, so that we can uh, determine which are footloose or not. It appears that uh, barely 12 companies will be able to comply. Parang mm -hmm. nagabala ka pa eh. Mm -hmm. Parang uh, wala na magkakomply dyan. Uh, ang konti-konti niyan. Uh, uh, Kaya nga humihiyaw yung mga BPO. Sila na nga yung pinaka-footloose eh. Dahil konting-konti yung investment on the ground. Uh, actually, ma'am, once we have seen the data, then we can determine more precisely which are these companies. But it, it really covers a lot of the companies that are easily able to run to the next country. Yes, I'm sorry to disagree. My data says that very, very few would uh, qualify for such an exemption. At uh, higit sa lahat, yung BPO, talagang walang chance dyan. Any more additions from the export processing zone? Ma'am. Ano sa tingin ninyo? Yes, please, Madam Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a final statement. Um, for, for the committee to be guided on your decision, as, as far as CITIRA is concerned, uh, if you can please ask uh, NEDA, uh, of the report because uh, under the Tinta law, they were, NEDA is required to do the cost-benefit analysis. And in their recent findings, um, uh, it, it shows that uh, there is, uh, although there's a small gap for taxes for gun and those taxes plowed back by the industries to the economy, which is more or higher than the tax for gun, social progress and other benefits are more. Uh, contributed by economic zones and our industries. Like, for example, it infused, it infused much capital. It reduced uh, poverty and crime incidents. And uh, it 
it, uh, it highly classified because of the additional income uh, provided the uh, LGU host. And your honors, uh, there is an AO18 of President Duterte uh, which uh, encourages the creation of more economic zones, especially in the countryside. So right now, there are only 105 LGUs hosting economic zones. So what if we will imp we implement AO18 and uh, 1,600 more LGUs will be hosting uh, uh, economic zone so we can spread the industries, the jobs, the technology and attain total development, uh, your honors. So this is why our position is, why fix when there is nothing broken? In fact, our industries are very willing to increase to 7% the GIE uh, contribution uh, that they are uh, limiting to the government no, from 5% GIE to 7%. That would uh, encourage more new investors and existing investors to expand. Because your honors, for two and a half years now that we have been discussing of uh, Trabajo and now Citira Bill, uh, PESA is badly affected. We really had a reduced uh, expansion and no new no, or very slow uh, new investments came in. Uh, to the country because of these uncertainties created by Sitira. Okay. Salamat. So, uh, Manang Ching, hindi pala totoo ang chismis na sangayon na kayo sa Sitira. Ma'am, Sitira is a very good bill, but we feel that it should first be tested to the domestic enterprises because this is the first time that they will have incentives. So, let's not change, but enhance uh, the incentives that we are providing our exporters because it is globally competitive, tried and tested already. Yes, um, I have to apologize to both SBMA and PESA. I think we have no, no more time to uh, see your PowerPoint presentations. If you could just provide us a USB or the printout, we'd be very grateful to consider, we'd, we'd be very happy to consider. In the meantime, um, I will be suspending this hearing in as much as MEPSA in Cebu requested their own hearing um, to uh, also attempt to quantify the uh, effects of the CITIRA as well as what we now call the triple whammy of the COVID, the VFA, and the potential uh, removal from the GSP, as well as um, the possibility of CITIRA uh, being um, passed in uh, whichever form. So, isususpend ko lamang itong hearing na ito. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. At sana may representante, may kinatawan yung DOF sa Cebu sa Sabado, doon sa MEPS. At uh, ganun din kung sino man ang gusto pumunta mula sa PESA, sa BOI at iba pa. Inaanyayahan ko po kayo na pumunta. Ganun din yung mga BPO. Marami-rami yung BPO sa Cebu. Ganun din yung SAPI at uh, iba pa. Uh, thank you very much to all of you, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday.